Thanksgiving weekend tradition as Grambling and Southern get together in New Orleans for the Bayou Classic. Fans from both schools have spent the weekend taking in all the sights, sounds, and food that the Crescent City is known for. With the party now complete, it's time to get down to business inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Southern took the win last year, but can the Jaguars make it two in a row? Grambling is in the midst of a six-game win streak, but can they get number seven and take down their rival? The right to play in the SWAC championship goes to the winner. It's the Bayou Classic, Grambling versus Southern, and it's next on NBCSN. Happy holidays, everyone, and welcome to New Orleans on this Thanksgiving weekend. As the Southern Jaguars take the field. And just moments ago, their head coach, Dawson Odoms, with his final words. You're on the sideline, when they come off, you stay positive. You be that energy when we don't have no energy. And then when it's crunk, you take us to another level. Be great. Be great in everything that we do. Let's be great today. Let's be great today. You don't need no good speech for this one, man. This is down by your class. Unleashed on three. One, two, three. Unleashed! And the Grambling State University Tigers now take the field here in the Superdome. Hello once again, everyone. I'm Todd Harris. Hope you had a very happy and festive Thanksgiving. Well, today, this 46th edition of the Bayou Classic gives the winner the opportunity to face off against Alcorn State for the SWAC title. And there is the trophy that is on the line as we take a look at the West Division standings. There you see Southern at 5-1, Grambling State at 4-2. Interesting enough, though, Grambling has already beaten Alcorn State earlier this year where Southern took the loss. And I'm joined by my colleagues, the former UCLA Bruin, Charles Arbuckle, and the former Iowa Hawkeye defensive standout, Anthony Heron. All right, guys, let's get right to it. Southern University, their coach says they will go as far as their quarterback, but he is a very good one. He is really good. He's really improved his ball handling skills, but you're going to see here him throwing the football down the field and doing some things with it. But Darius Skelton is a young man that can make plays and get the ball down the field. The one thing that he's been able to do over the last three or four weeks is really not only throw the deep ball but run the football effectively i think his play action passing his ball handling skills and all the things that he's able to do there have improved this year they also have window dressing for him to get him an open space and what you'll see on this last replay is when he's able to run the football he's very decisive he doesn't hesitate and he gets it going and that's what the southern team needs in the last three games 459 yards six touchdowns the key to this offense and the key to southern winning last year and if they do it again this year is Darius go and on the defensive side of the football but their top rushing defense is led by Calvin Lunkins at the linebacker position he moved from the will position to the Mike position this season because he's the best communicator they have up front he's the leader of this Jaguars defense and they're gonna have a lot to handle on the opposing offense when they're dealing with the Grambling Tigers and right now we sit it down to the field Lewis Johnson with the head coach of Southern Dawson Odoms very much. All right, Coach, you've got another chance to get to a SWAC title game. What do you need from your offense and your defense today to get there? Offense, just make sure we take care of the football and execute on third down. Uh, defense, get off the field on third down. Somehow got to control their quarterback. All right, Coach, thank you. Good luck today. Thank you. Always a pleasure. All right, thank you, Lewis. Grambling in a very similar situation, Anthony. They have a dual threat quarterback and a pretty strong defense. Let's talk about their quarterback, first of all, in Higbottom. And, and Jeremy Hickbottom, he's a guy who's going to make his second career start in the Bayou Classic this season. We saw him on the field right here in New Orleans. He told us just not too long ago that he's anticipating the ability to add more explosiveness to the offense than what was there on the slow start that Grambling had early in the season. And he's one of the most bombastically dynamic talents at the FCS level. So I anticipate he's not only going to have a great effort, 
and throwing the football, but he's their leading rusher as well. So what he brings to the table on the ground attack is going to have to be on display for as great as they are with Southern's run defense. The biggest thing with, with Grambling is DeAndre McCarthy. They have to play well. He's a defensive linebacker that can make it, make plays for him. Plays with a chip on his shoulder, a little undersized, but he loves to come up and knock you, knock huh? you around. All right, let's send it back down to the field. The fastest Cincinnati Bearcat in New Orleans, Lewis Johnson, with the head coach of Grambling. <laughs> All right, Todd, thank you. Coach, you ran off six straight wins to get here. How do you get one more and punch your ticket to the SWAC title game? Well, we got to do what we've always done. You know, we've done a really good job of running, tackling, and, and uh, not making mistakes. Uh, we got to do the same thing today, and we got to play really good offensively. All righty, good luck to you as well today. All right, thank you. Todd? And right now, we send it over to the PA address announcer here in New Orleans, Mr. Mark Romig. And now, to honor America, the veterans of all of our forces in the minute we perform, would everyone please rise, remove your hats, and join in the singing of our national anthem, performed by the New Orleans Citywide Youth Choir under the direction of international recording artist Tanya Boyd Cannon. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming who's brought stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rock is red, red, the bones bursting in the air. through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land? Ladies and gentlemen, the New Orleans Youth Choir, Director Tanya Boyd Cannon, and the Grambling State University Army ROTC. It's the 46th edition of the Bayou Classic live on NBCSN. When we return to New Orleans, Grambling State University taking on Southern after this. Just go to lisa.com today. You need this bed. Back in New Orleans, you won't want to miss the halftime show, and that is one of the best shows of all time here in New Orleans over Thanksgiving weekend as the Grambling State Band and the Southern University Band get together for a great clash. Grambling won the toss. They deferred, so they will receive, Southern will receive and they will be going from right to left. All right, guys, give me some keys to the game as we get set for this 46th edition. Anthony, I'll start with you. What does Southern need to do this year to make sure they get two wins in a row in the Bayou Classic? Well, one of the things that's been happening in recent weeks with Grambling State's offense is that it's gotten far more explosive. They've thrown the ball deeper than they were throughout the first month of the season, so the explosive play will be a huge key yeah. for Grambling and I State to build momentum for them. Excuse me. And, and I think for Grambling, you really have to do the things you've been doing on defense. The last four games, 12 sacks, 12 interceptions. They have really been a ball hawking team, and they talked about it. That's what they do turnover Tuesday. They have to create that now on a Saturday at the Bayou Classic. And they've been as good at that as anyone at the FCS level this season. They've constantly taken the ball away from their opponents, creating extra possessions for them offensively. Yeah, and head coach Broderick Fobbs told us just the other day, the ball is the issue. Nothing else matters. I, thought that <laughs> I, I was, love that. That was very telling, exactly. When you try to tell young kids to focus on a football, if they're catching it, it's always the point. I'm sure he's doing the same thing with those defensive guys as well. Southern in their Carolina blue and gold uniforms. Grambling wearing the throwbacks. And more on that a little later on in the game with Lewis Johnson. Kendrick Jones back deep for Southern. And 
And this one to sail into the end zone. So Southern will have the ball first. Remember, they won last year, holding off a Gramlin late comeback, 38-28. Off to a great start as we take a look at the starting lineups first for the Jaguars offense. Carter, Aby, Brinson, Bishop, and Harris anchor that front line, trying to keep Darius Skelton safe and upright. Ben Houston, Register Bedford, and Jamar Washington, talented trio of receivers for the Jacks. First and 10 now from the 25. Well, unbalanced shifting right away. And it's a false start. <laughs> Folks a little anxious to get down to Bourbon Street after the game, fellas. False start. False start. Offense, number 65. First down. Tony Ross, our referee today, so not the way that head coach Dawson Odom would like to start. So now it makes it a first and 15 from the 20 for the Jacks. And they come out throwing. Skelton was off the mark. As we take a look at the Grambling Tigers defense. Good group up front with a few key players missing in action today. Anthony Mullins not starting today. Wesley Green and Cody Dillard. The linebacking position, Wiggs, McCarthy, Hogues. And then you see a very talented defensive backs with Martin and Nick Williams anchoring the corners. So Southern digging themselves an early hole in the first position, second down at 15. Skelton flushed from the pocket, keeping the eyes downfield, across the 25. And decides not to get out of bounds, finally dragged down at the 26. Tackle made by Damian Krumatai. You have to rally to the football, and anytime he gets the ball and he gets out in open field, you have to stay cognizant of the rush lanes, but when you're coming downhill, man, you got to make sure he doesn't get outside of that. And those of us accustomed to watching Southern's offense are going to see more tempo. I mean, they've been a team that's gone no huddle over the years. They operate even faster this season than they have in years past. Brings up a third and nine. This is where Grambling wants you to be because they want to put you behind the chains and attack the football in the air. Scott looking downfield. He's got trouble. Gets the ball away and somehow gets it out of bounds. No flag thrown just yet. And the folks at Grambling would sure like to see one fly. Buck, you were just talking about him before the game, DeAndre McCarthy. They like to prowl pre-snap. They move the linebackers, the defensive front all over the place, and McCarthy just operates downhill. Had to miss a few games early in the season. Since he's been in the lineup, his defense is really taking an additional step. Sometimes in that A-gap, they'll come late, and they'll bring two, and you can't Sitting get them to run about. Just the offense, number eight. Spot foul, loss it down. Fourth down. So Skelton got the ball away, and funny enough, he, he was not taken to the ground. He was slung around, spun it, but it took all his strength to get that ball out before he's tackled, and he's having a little chat with offensive linemen on the side. This is going to be a key because Grambling is going to pressure, and, and they know that. And talking to both of these staff, they know what they like to do. you got to make sure that you protect Skelton on every single drop back. Monte Davis takes it at the 40, finds a little bit of a seam on the left-hand side and is driven out of bounds in Southern Territory, knocked out at about the 43. So Gramley's defense stands tall, holds them, forces the punt for Southern, and now we'll see what their offense is doing. Guys, what a way to start the game. Great field position, the ball marked at the 42 as we take a look at the starting lineup for the Tigers. Their line looks at Jacobs Moore, Jefferson Waddell, and Wade McLeod. I mentioned Jeremy Hickbottom, the quarterback. Tight end, Cleef Jackson, and Johnson Richardson, Rash, and Davis are the wide receivers. First and 10 from the 42. Hickbottom finds his man, had a great bit of coverage there, and it's a loss with Donald Johnson out of the flat, taken down quickly. Happy Jacoby Papi on there to make the stop. 
see the defense for the Jags. Davis, Champion, Bryant, and Jordan Lewis. Active linebackers and Lumpkins, Papillon, who just made that play. Brumfield gains Harris and Smith. On second down, ball tipped in the air. And once again, Papillon involved in that. He was looking for his tight end, Lyndon Rash. Tries to, get, ahead, tries to get the ball out quickly, and that's just a catchable ball by Raylan Richardson. You got to come up with that. Looks like they're trying to get him some rhythm throws because that's one of the things we talked about in the call, and we'll talk about it throughout this game with Hickbottom. So third and 14 for the Tigers. Plenty of time. Hickbottom up the middle, flies it right in the middle. Beautiful. Drops it in over the linebackers ahead of the DBs. Kobe Ross coming up, and they'll move the chains. The accuracy is at times inconsistent from Jeremy Hickbottom, but the arm strength, the talent to be able to just fire the ball, especially when he can step into it, you see that he's got some unique traits from the pocket. Big route, and then you have a cross coming underneath that clears everything for him, perfectly thrown ball in the middle of the field. New set of downs for the Tigers. Hickbottom fakes the pitch, and he probably should have gotten rid of that as he is taken down and met by a host of Jaguars. Led by Jalen Ivey, number 96, the junior from right here in Tioga, Louisiana. One of the tough things against this defense is going to be trying to get outside. It's hard to kind of run on the edges. They will challenge you if you try to do that. Hickbottom had the pitch, man, but he decided to keep it. So it's a loss of two that makes it second down and 11. Receivers along the stream, hit bottom goes the other way, and receiver does a great job, Anthony, of just sitting down right in front of the defense to pick up another first down. In rhythm, and yeah. that's where this passing attack is at its best. When we've seen so far in this series, they're quickly getting the ball out of Jeremy Hickbottom's hand. The pass protection is held up soundly enough for the quick game. Also, they're showing numbers. When you can see the numbers of the quarterback and the receiver, yeah. it makes it a much easier throw, and it looks like that's what they're trying to do with Hickbottom. Pickup of 12 with Raylan Richardson getting the first down. First and 10 now inside the 15. Hickbottom will hold it and turns the corner. He's met by a host of blue jerseys led by number one Calvin Lunkins, the two-time SWAC defensive player of the week. He's a guy that will come downhill and hit you in the backfield. Sometimes I've seen teams make him be over aggressive and use that against him. You'll see if Bramlin will try that with this fast flowing defense of Southern. Lunkins, a local product right here in New Orleans, played his high school ball at Warren Easton. Second and nine. His first touch on the ball picks up two, maybe three. One of the things that Grambling's been really effective at, especially if the offense has gotten more explosive, is partly because they threaten you laterally. Yeah. They'll continue to throw the ball outside the numbers and then look for that strike play opportunity. It won't necessarily be here from a distance standpoint inside the red zone, but you just get the defense flowing sideways over and over again, get them in that habit, and then you can try to throw it over the top. So third and eight in field goal position already. Hickbottom flushed in the pocket, keeps his eyes downfield, has a man, and it's a touchdown, Tigers! Devontae Davis. A methodical drive, and the one good thing about Davis, he stayed alive. It was a corner route. Hickbottom looks for him. They have double corners. Both sides are running it. He goes one way, comes back the other, has time. Devontae Davis does what? He comes back in hard, makes himself available. I talked about it. If you see numbers, you throw the numbers, and that's what Hickbottom did. Miguel Mendez on to tack on the extra point up and good. So it's Grambling State taking the early lead in the 46th Bayou Classic. And Jeremy Hickbottom finds Devontae Davis, who they said will stretch the field that time good enough for a 20-yard strike and the early lead here in New Orleans. Tigers on top of the Jaguars, 7-0. Crest, healthy, beautiful smiles for life. The 46th Annual Bayou Classic on NBCSN is brought to you by Procter & Gamble's Crest. Worry-free 3D whitening, unleashing healthier, more beautiful smiles.
by McDonald's. Brought to you by McDonald's Black and Positively Golden. Join in and follow on Instagram at We Are Golden. And by Universal Pictures, Queen and Slim in theaters now. Beautiful weekend in New Orleans for the 46th annual Bayou Classic. Todd Harris, Charles Arbuckle, Lewis Johnson, and Anthony Heron with you. And the Tigers strike early. Time where life gets difficult on defenses when you make the go in the second reaction. Well, freeze it here. Right now, the pocket is actually fine, but you're going to see Hickbottom extend the play and get towards the outside. So initially, you can let him run. The coverage is sound in the secondary, but as he extends the play, he gets outside the pocket. De Deontay Davis ends up in the end zone one-on-one -on -one with Benjamin Harris, the rover. And from there, it's just hard, Buck, when you're continuing as a defensive back to try and cover a talented quarterback with all these receivers to work with. The scramble drill is the hardest thing for a defense because I know what I'm looking for. I'm trying to make eye contact with the quarterback. He knows that I'm going to get open somewhere. And that was a perfectly done thing by Davis, and Hickbottom just finds him right in the end zone. It's hard to defend, but when you see it done properly, you know from experience how well it works. People Brandon. use the term backyard football, but there's design to the scramble drill. Hinton and Kendrick Jones back deep as Miguel Mendez sends it into the end zone, so they'll bring it out to the 25. I'll tell you guys a story. Homer Smith used to talk about the top of the, the uh, when you're in the end zone. Right. If you're running the scramble, don't go past that because if you catch, and he's a great offensive coordinator, a lot of schools, but if you stay on that color of the, of the letters, mm -hmm. the quarterback will just take you out. It'll just, he'll throw you to open. If you get too high or above the number of letters in the back of the end zone, that's usually when you see guys not make plays. So Ladarius Skelton brings his offense out, the junior out of Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Played some ball at Fullerton Community College, and here he is now at Southern. 12 TDs rushing, dual threat quarterback indeed. This time he gives it up to the first man through, and it's Devon Ben. Young man from John Curtis High School right here in New Orleans. He picks up about two yards. We talk about them doing more with Ladarius Skelton at the tempo. They're doing it here, but they also have the orbit motion. They have the fly motion. They have a lot of things now to give this offense some diversity. So second down and eight. And it's Skelton out of the gun. Gramley's showing some pressure. He steps out of this one, looks to the sideline again. They're trying to get a player where they're coming, and then they'll readjust and make an audible on that. Tigers stand on the prowl. Yep. They show pressure, bring five back one out, and Skelton's pass is complete as the receiver is knocked out of bounds. Just about the 31-yard line, Hunter Register making the catch. Hey guys, the defensive coordinator for Grambling State, Everett Todd, is one of the underrated coaches at the FCS level because of the way he allows his defense to freelance in certain moments. But like we were talking about the scramble, group, scram scramble drill, there's design to all the stem and disguise you see at the first and second level for the Tigers. That'll bring up a third and four after the four-yard pickup for the Jaguars. Skelton, three-step drop, has a man open, and it would have been a first down, and Hunter Register went to the ground but just could not come up with it. Skelton off target. His toughest throws, in my opinion, when you watch him, are these anticipatory throws. Watch him clutch just a little bit, almost trying to pull the ball back instead of just throwing it to him and letting it watch him. It's almost like I'm... I've pitched before, so I know exactly what that's like when you're trying to, you know, aim the ball instead yeah. of throw the ball. And you can see him doing that on film. When he doesn't do that, this offense clicks. So that'll bring in Cesar Barajas, who will have to punt it away. The second time, Southern comes up empty. And this takes a huge Jaguar roll. This is going to go inside the 10, just shy of the 10-yard line. As Barajas does his job and pins the Tigers back at the 10, a 59-yard punt. Gramley State leads the Bayou Classic 7-0. He's doing it in record style. Sunday night, a pair of division leaders lock horns in H-Town as Tom Brady and the defending Super Bowl champion, New England Patriots, score off with Deshaun Watson and the Houston Texans. Football Night in America starts at 7 Eastern, only on NBC. 9.07 to go here in the first quarter, Grambling on top, and their first drive was a thing of beauty, exactly 
what Coach Bob's dialed up. It was a controlled effort. Jeremy Hickbottom, the first time he had the ball. And I'd say overall, there were some opportunities for bigger plays to attempt down the field. And I love the fact that he just continued to throw it in rhythm. He fed the ball around to a number of playmakers on the outside. When the pass rush did leak through, we saw the athleticism on display, accuracy on the move, feeding it into the end zone, leading to that first Tigers first down. And, and what you really have to see there is the pocket was clean, and he made every throw that he needed to to the right guy. First and ten from the ten. Hickbottom comes out firing and a great job of the defense there blowing that thing up. Jacoby Papillon in the midst took on two men and basically blew that play up. Looking for Dark West Bruton. Papillon is making his presence known. And that's the one thing with these grambling receivers. They're not very big at times. Blendon Rash, I've seen that a couple of times on film, not able to lock up a linebacker, which is difficult anyway. And that's a tough mesh between him and the ball getting to the receiver. Rash isn't small. He's 6'1", 210. Yeah, but he Papillon. doesn't play big sometimes. <laughs> Papillon goes 5'10", 180. Go to the run game. Not a lot there on the left-hand side. Pick up a, maybe a yard. Todd, you bring up a good point. Sometimes, as a receiver, they don't want to block. He has the body to block. <laughs> but I, being a tight end, I know I always had to block. So that was the way I was going to get on the field. Sometimes the receivers have to know you got to stick your nose in there and you got to get dirty. And grind. You wanted to look good at the Rose Bowl, didn't you? Uh, I did, but I also knew if I was going to stay on the field, I had to block something. Like Anthony, these are the big guys you got to lock up with. Third and nine, the ball resting at the 11. Hickbot getting pressure and he's going to get taken down as a host of Jaguars first had him about at the two yard line. He's able to go forward. And finally tackled just shy of the 10. So a loss of a yard there, which could have been a lot worse as Robert Square, number 96, led the charge for Southern. We use the term prowling for all the stem that you see from Grambling State. You won't see as much movement pre-snap from Southern, but they've got some quality individual pass rushers. Jordan Lewis was one of the guys who was on display in that role right there. Came from the right defensive end that time. But they'll move him around. He'll be in a two-point stance. He'll be left end, right end. He's got the speed to turn the corner. So Miguel Mendez punting from his own end zone. Gets this one off quick, and it was close, but he launches a beauty. Sending the receiver all the way back to the 34, and he's able to fall on it after initially knocking it. Guys, that could have been a disaster because the momentum was going the wrong way as the ball just sat there. A 55-yard punt. Brandon Hitton lucky to get back on top of that. Talk about a team that gets after it. He almost did that. You can't do that. You gotta be good and solid. Southern up from seven dust. Excuse me, Grambling up seven dust. Bayou Classics first quarter is presented by Procter and Gamble's Crest. Crest, healthy, beautiful smiles for life. Now viewing Procter & Gamble's Fan Zone, composed of Procter & Gamble's employees and family. Procter & Gamble's Crest is a proud sponsor of the Bayou Classic for the third consecutive year. A few seats still available here in the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Capacity of 76,468. Fellas, people are still coming in because you know what's coming up. The halftime show, oh, the Battle yeah. of the Bands. Southern takes over the 31 on the jet sweep coming around. It's a nice pickup of about nine yards. This is what I was talking about with the ball handling skills and him being able to let that guy get right there and it pulls the defense in. Ladarius Skelton is doing a much better job of that. They're doing more of that motion to get the defense moving side to side. Brandon Hinton on that last carry. He was on the punt return and now Skelton is loose. Skelton takes a knee just inside the 45. But Darius Skelton has 12 rushing teams on the year. Six in the swap in rushing. We have Brandon Wiggs coming free off the edge. Well, off that best point on the interior, that's part of the point, Charles. We've got much better reading that zone read. First and 10 now from the 45 of Grambling State. Pitch it this time. Wide open, and the runner stays on his feet. Finally knocked out of bounds. What a great play call as Southern dials up a beauty with Daryl Lewis getting the call. Yeah, I love it when they get outside on those option plays and they're able to really get moving. What it does is it allows you to get quick tempo, get to the edge. 
pickup of 23. Go back to the running game, and this time stood up at the 20, so a pickup of about two yards there. You wonder if the offense under Dawson Odoms and the offense coordinator is trying maybe to get Larry Skill, you know, get him in a flow, because it seemed like those first two series, he just seemed out of sync. It really does. It looks like they're doing some things now, like I saw on film, with the fly motion, the, the orbit motion, just really getting guys moving and then getting him going quickly. To Anthony's point, that zone read is predicated on all that, but all this motion, like this, sets it up. Second down and eight. Straight up the middle, a nice pickup there as they go inside the 15. Chennis Berry, the offensive coordinator for Southern. This is a much better looking drive than they had on their first two. That's the true freshman running back there, Gerard Sims, who's more so been kind of their short yardage running back in power situations, but now they've been getting him more and more in the flow of the offense there as a true freshman. He's been really effective in pass protection, which is going to be key against that stemming defense. Good time, Scott. Finds his man, taken down inside the nine-yard line. That's good enough. There he is, Skelton. Moving the ball to the outside. One of his playmakers on a register. On a register has caught a touchdown in time six out. straight time games. Out. First time out of the half. Grandley's going to take a timeout and talk about this one. 5:03 to play in the first. The Tigers have a lead, seven nothing. But the ball inside the ten. This will give Southern an opportunity with Dawson Odoms to talk to his offensive coordinator, Chenis Berry, and see if they can dial something up. And, of course, looking at Dawson Odoms here, it surprises me when you think about the fact that he hasn't been the SWAT coach of the year up to this point in his career. And part of it is because of the guy on the opposite sideline, because exactly. every season, essentially, Roderick Bob won it four years consecutively until finally we saw last season he didn't end up winning the award. But this guy has been spectacular in his time leading the Southern program. He really has. And his background in the triple option, understanding how to defend it and play against it, has really been a reason why they've used Gelt more in the run game and getting him comfortable with that in the zone read that morphs into the triple option. Single back set for Southern. First and goal. Skelton will keep it this time. Up the middle. Skelton is he in. And a big scrum as a helmet comes out. And still no signal. Yeah, looks like they're going to roll forward. Momentum was stopped. About at the one foot line. Similar play against Alabama A&M early in the year where Skelton gets hit at the goal line. Similar to this, but all the window dressing, moving everything over. You see those big offensive linemen. When they want to run, they go behind Jonathan Bishop, one of their best old linemen, the right guard. You can see there, that's where they were really angling and attacking that Grambling defense. We'll see if they still, guys, choose to pull their guards up front. There's so much movement and pulling that Southern loves to do in their offensive attack. That can be risky here in short yardage. Second and goal. Gonna get in on that play, so that's actually a loss of about a yard. Cameron Richardson making a stop. He would want that back with Darius Skelton because if he takes that ball, he's walking into the end zone. And to your point, Anthony, they've gone away from the guards pulling. They just came off base and attacked. If he goes to that right, he would have had a, a touchdown. Wesley Green anchoring the defensive line, bringing up a big third and goal. They've been the best third down offense in the slack throughout the season in Southern. They'll be fourth in the country. Skelton's going to get taken down again short. So they'll bring a fourth down, and guys, I'm surprised the flag didn't fly there because it looked like the back was in motion towards the line before the plant ball was snapped. Donald Freeman making the stop. Two plays ago, it almost looked that way, and I thought Skelton was just going to dump it out to yep. the outside, and that might have been an easy six, but he was conscious of something inside. Something told him to go in there, and he get, came off the, the fly sweep or fly motion quickly. So Dawson Odoms decides, you know what, let's just take the points. It should be an easy one for Cesar Barajas. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. Announcer Jinx. And Todd Harris kissing <laughs> death. <laughs> Yard chip just inside gets me off the snide. There you go, Cesar. 
So 7 to 3, 252 to play, and a great stand for that Gramley State defense. And you see the motion right there, and I thought, right, you see what they turn inside and they give them shoulders. I thought he was just going to dump it over. He had a guy coming over. Let it register. Yeah. 7 to 3, both teams have scored early here with 252 to play in the first quarter. University, they've had some tremendous alumni. Doug Williams, what can you say about the Super Bowl MVP from Super Bowl 22 getting the win over the Denver Broncos? Of course, he was a coach there as well. Charlie Jordan did not know. He got so many passes from Dan Bounce, but he was only 5'11". Buck Buchanan, Willie Davis, two-time Super Bowl champion. And Everson Walls lurking in that backfield of the Dallas Cowboys. He was a menace to offenses. And of course, Willis Reed. Game seven, that's all you need to say. Tommy Agee and the wonderful Erica Badu. Singer, songwriter, and actress. Grambling band getting some rest in before they put on a show. And folks, I'll tell you what, yeah. you do not want to miss the Battle of the Bands at halftime. I retold this story, and it seems like every year it comes up with my first recruiting level. One of the first is Grambling. Yeah. And I mean, it was just... It was neat because if Eddie Robinson signs it and you just, you know, it's one of those things you never forget. C.J. Russell back deep for Grambling. He takes it at the one. Nice job of fielding it, and he's going to bring it out. As the flag flies, he stretches to the 10. And that's the area where you usually see a block in the back. Jordan Davis on the coverage for the Jaguars. Illegal block in the back. Gets the kick to team. Oh. At the distance to the goal. First down. So the penalty on Southern. I think the penalty was actually on Grambling. He signaled that it was on Southern. It was the other way. <laughs> Southern had a penalty and got five yards out of it, so the hold goes against the Tigers. So they I don't remember those times, sorry, those new rules in college football where you can fair catch that sure. at any point. You don't have to take it from the one yard line. You can get it at the 25 just being a fair catch. One of those things is a decision making process to play out from the yard extent. So Brandon from the five. As they give it to Keelan Elder, number 23. And Anthony's point is well taken because it's so much harder to go 95 yards as opposed to the distance you're going, which was 75 if you're at the 25. So it's just a big difference of yardage, and the percentages go way down every time you add yards to that. 2.20 to play here in the first quarter, 7 3, Grandin on top. Pick bottom rolling, throwing back to the middle, dangerous as his receiver comes up with the grab just across the 20 yard line as Raylan Richardson makes the grab. By design, they're going to roll this pocket to get away from the rush, but then also you see Hickbottom does a nice job of waiting to the last second to get that head around right there. He sees his receiver who's following, trailing him, so to speak, and he hits him with a nice run. Juggled it momentarily, almost coughing up in the air as Cordell Caldwell, number 37, was the man who made the stop. First and 10, they move the chains now, just outside the 20. Elder with the carry and a nice run before he's thrown down at the 27. So a nice balance of calls from Grambling State as they're going both to the pass and the run. Here it is one more time. So right there, it ends up being an inside zone, but that ghost motion that on that jet sweep look, it draws the hang defender away from the ball. Second down and three, and they'll keep it on the ground. And it looks like enough for another first down for the Tigers. And Hickbottom in that position takes away your rusher, who's Jordan Lewis. So basically two guys go away, and you're able to find a way to get this thing running. I think Rambler, Mark Orlando, just like you talked about Chandler Berry, the offensive coordinator there, it seems like he has Hickbottom in a real nice rhythm right. with what he's trying to do. New set of downs now from just outside the 30. They'll keep it with Elder and the 
Redshirt freshman from Dallas, Texas, Duncanville High School, taken down by number one Calvin Munkins, the two-time SWAC defensive player of the week this year. And to your point, Charles, Mark Orlando, it's his first season as the offensive coordinator for Grambling State. And it was a big decision that Dawson Odoms had to, uh, sorry, that Broderick Fobbs had to make over the offseason as he tried to revamp how this offense would operate. Big bottom now on a second and eight. Stays on his feet, somehow spins away, and gets positive yardage, albeit about one, before he's taken down by number 42, Davis. Joe Davis. A really nice job by them rushing. You see that opening, so he thinks he can get away. And Davis, Lewis actually is the first guy there. He's usually right there that you got a convergence of defenders for Southern getting to Hickbottom. So that brings up third and nine. And that'll take us to the end of the first quarter. Seven to three, Grambling State on top of Southern. Southern won it last year, looking to make it two in a row at the 46th annual Bayou Classic, live on NBCSN. Football coaches Eddie Robinson what a what a man I mean he led so many young men in this program at Grambling State and through the years gave so much back to the school and the program that he loved so much and had a chance to see him working with his players throughout you see the throwback uniforms they brought in a little bit more on that but coach Rob touched so many lives in that Grambling State program he is an all-time classic Hall of Famer for more on that we check in with Lewis Johnson Technical issues there with Lewis Johnson's microphone. We'll get back to him more on Coach Rob a little later on as we welcome you back inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Opened in 1975 with a capacity of 76,468. Located on 1500 Sugar Bowl Drive. 7-3. Grambling on top as we start the second quarter. Not quite the fireworks we had in the game last year. On a first third down. And stretching out for it as Higbotton had a beautiful throw there, looking for his receiver, trying to make the catch as Lyndon Rash. Rash makes it and stretches, but he's going to come up a little, looks like about a yard short, fellas. It's a nice tackle by Chase Foster. He's right there in man to man coverage at the safety position. It's not easy, especially when you got that receiver rolling out of the reception. Looks like there was going to be an opportunity for Rash. He couldn't quite get there. So Rash comes up just short, and that means the Tigers will have to punt it away. Miguel Mendez now with Brandon Hinton, number 24, standing back. And look how deep he is, guys. He's respecting the leg <laughs> of Mendez. He's back at the 10. This one's going to be short. And he has been fantastic on that nine iron. The wedge, he just sets it up that time and puts it in at the 16. So Southern taking over before they take the field. And with the 43-yard punt. Let's talk about some of the notable alumni that attended Southern University. One of the all-time great DBs, Mel Blunt. Tell me I'm wrong. Doesn't get much better than that. There you go. Denise Woods, Pro Football Hall of Famer. College Football Hall of Famer. He's great. Harold level. Carmichael, Luke, the great Lou Brock of the St. Louis Cardinals, Willie Davenport, Avery Johnson, the little general. First and ten now, Southern. And Skelton will keep it. Nice pickup for him on first down. Pickup of five. Southern also had their fair share of great musicians, guys. You talk about Brand from Marcellus, oh, yeah. Randy Jackson, the adults, <laughs> and the general, Sherry Kadorian. First female African American general retired in 1990 as a brigadier general. Second down and six now for Southern. They trail seven to three. 13-30 to play here in the first half. Pressure comes, gets it away. It was a catch made. Yes, it was. Had to go deep on that one. As Cameron Mackey makes the grab. Grambler trying to break pressure. You can see DeAndre Hold coming late. 
but he's not able to get there. And, and Skelton throws that ball down and away where only his receiver can really get it. So a new set of downs for the Jaguars. First and 10 for the 27. Skelton rotates the backside, and there was no one there except big number 51, Brandon Wicks. All the movement they show up front, it can be difficult sometimes to stay fit within yeah. your running gaps. And there, great job by Wicks as he penetrated downhill, bringing down a very talented runner. Loss of eight on the play, so a second down and 18. And guys, so far, Southern has just not been able to get into a groove, have not been getting a sustained drive right. uh, with, with the pass run option. And they seem like they go to the run a lot, they stick to it, and they get stopped, and then they put it away. Von Ben now, a little setback for Southern. Oh, quick pass to the inside, runs into his own man, and is finally tripped up and taken down at the 25. Brandon Hinton looking for some space. The two things about second and long is there can be screen and there can be draw. <laughs> you can hear the sideline yell the screen because you knew it was coming. And look how many Grambling players come to the yep. bar now. A whole lot of them. It looked like there was about 13 players on the field tied for Grambling's defense. <laughs> I, I thought they had some gumbo down there. And I thought you were going to get it because I was a jambalaya. We were going to fight for it. That's Pick up of six makes it third and 12. Skelton has his man and he's cut down. Ben taken down. Damien Krumatai, beautiful tackle. Ben's going to go back and tell him, throw the ball earlier. There yep. is, because that's a kill shot. A corner that's sitting out there that's waiting on you. You throw it late, and that's what can happen. Luckily, Ben could get those legs off the ground, but a really nice play out there by Krumatai. So Barajas back on to punt for Southern, who just have not been able to get into a good offensive flow. And give a lot of credit to that Tiger defense. Deontay Davis now back to receive for Grambling. Ball checks up, and it will take a Southern bounce going out of to the sideline at about 36. Open field tackle served up hot today after the 34-yard punt. Watch this. Just gets his head around and cut down inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. I want to ride or die. Beat and slam. Read it R. Now playing with beaters everywhere. The 46th annual Bayou Classic on NBCSN is brought to you by Procter & Gamble's Old Spice. Clean as a whistle. And by McDonald's. Brought to you by McDonald's Black and Positively Golden. Join in and follow on Instagram at WeAreGolden. On the banks of the mighty Mississippi here in the Crescent City, 7-3 Grambling State on top of Southern. We've worked out the audio difficulties. We check in now with the one and only Lewis Johnson. Hey, John. Well, as the world of college football remembers the legacy of Eddie Robinson, two of the most accomplished coaches of this era made their way to Louisiana to pay tribute to the legend. They're billing this as the legacy keepers preserving the Eddie Robinson playbook. First on, uh, it was Urban Meyer who was on campus back on March 21st. He did a VIP meet and greet, gave a talk to a group, spoke to the team privately. And then on May 7th, in the middle of recruiting season, it was Alabama's Nick Saban who flew in on his own plane. plane. And the original plan was to carve out about an hour from take off the touchdown. But actually, he spent more time there than he planned. But he gave a great talk, I understand, to a packed town hall, went to visit the museum, spent some time there with Coach Fobbs. But these two big coaches in this era paying tribute to the legend of another era. Yeah, no question about it. And uh, you bring in the heavy hitters, as Lewis pointed out, guys, during recruiting time. That does a lot when Nick Saban comes to town and extols the virtues of a great coach and Coach Robinson is. Jeremy Hickbot will run it out to almost a first down pick of about nine yards as he's finally pushed out. And guys, Charles, you were recruited by Coach Rob. Well, I, I grew up in Texas, so I, I think it's one of those letters that you generate, you think, but still by Eddie Robinson and now a war. Everything we know is college football, the number of wins all around him and what he's been able to do. Second down and one, and right up the middle go the Grambling Tigers as Keelan Elder with a 
big run, breaks it off inside Southern Territory, finally tackled at about the 37-yard line, a pickup of 17. Not wasting any more time. They're going to go right back to him as Elder picks up another six yards. And Anthony, he talked, Roderick Fobbs talked about the three pillars, Reddy Robinson, and that was the one thing that all these young men get when they come to ground. Elder three for three and picks up, looks like another two, two and a half yards for him. They're going to be short of a first down, which will bring up a third and about one. Look at that. That's a list. It's behind Joe Pye. It's ahead of Bobby Bowden. The entire game of football yeah. was really affected by Eddie Robinson. You think about the way that he allowed his offense to throw the football at such a high level, the tempo they began to use. He was ahead of his curve, ahead yeah. of his time for modernizing the sport of football. The fact that he lasted so long, yeah. it was yeah, amazing. Exactly. That's the thing when you think about how long he was around and how long, how many people he influenced and impacted. Breaking it off the middle, stays on his feet, C.J. Russell. Twenty-seven yards to pay dirt for the freshman at Arcadia, Louisiana. I use the term hang defender. That's where that safety position would normally be folding over the top and be in position to make a tackle here. And when you have a quarterback who's hurt them with his legs like Jeremy Hickbottom has, yep. that hang defender has to stay and be patient on the backside. It can mess up the pursuit angles. You see right now the Tigers taking advantage. And Mendez tacks on the extra point. Grambling State now on top by 11. As the freshman breaks it off up the middle, looked like they might grab him by the heels, but he stays on his feet. The 46th annual Bayou Classic shape it up to be a good one, especially if you're a Grambling fan. The Manchester Derby on NBCSN. 14-3, Grambling State on top, 9.30 to play here in the first half of the 46th Annual Bayou Classic. Todd Harris, Anthony Heron, Charles Arbuckle, and of course, Lewis Johnson down on the field. All right, guys, are you surprised the way that Grambling has been able to move the ball so effectively? Well, especially because Southern's defense has been the top rushing defense in the SWAC throughout the season, but... They've done a really effective job, Grambling has, of calling some pocket movement for Jeremy Hickbottom, but then still mixing yeah. in with zone read. And he's read it really well, Buck. Yeah, and I think also if you look at Southern playing Jackson State, they gave up 308 yards on the ground. And that was a precursor when you have a couple of weeks off to kind of look at this and get ready for it. Mendez now setting this one short. Natalie Hinton take it, and the ball comes free. And did Southern get back on top of it, or is Grambling back in business inside the 25? Grambling's been holding that in their back pocket because right. Southern won't take the fair catch. And if you do, you get it inside the 25. And it is Grambling that recovers. Look at that ball check up. Yeah. Oh, man. And that's the thing. You get the ball coming at you as a returner, and you think I have a chance, but that ball just hit perfectly at where it rolls away from it. Cash Foley, number 83, comes up with a loose ball. And I think you're having something like that in your back pocket when they least expect it. And now an opportunity to really put the pressure on Southern. Already up 14-3 to as Foley, a special teams man of the hour. Southern has not shown a propensity to want a fair catch, and that has hurt them in that situation because now Grambling has a great special teams play. In formation look for Grambling. Skelton faked it, has a man outside, tried to high point it, and no flag thrown there. He was looking for Raylan Richardson, who goes 6'4", 200. He had Lyndon Rash wide open and seen. 
He, see, he goes outside. You see Rash on your screen. But Raylan Richardson has a contested ball that the trail run fell is right there on the play. That's a great play. Yeah. But that would have scored because you had that seam route. They ran double verticals with the crossing coming from the other side. Did, did Hickbottom get greedy? <laughs> well, you can tell it's one of those plays where normally yeah. Richardson is the guy who's open yeah. in practice, and so he didn't really read the coverage yes. coming off the mess point. I mean, he that's had... A, that's a quick that's hitter, isn't oh, it? You yeah. get in the quick yeah. turnaround yeah. and try to hit him right away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you, we call it sudden check, check, change off. offense where you attack right away, and yeah. I like it. But they had two guys on the vertical, and Antoine had a chance. Watch this, guys. It was wide open. <laughs> You're going to see Lyndon Rash on the, on the, on the scene. Oh, I mean, right on the, there. On the hash. No one went hash. with him. No, because the fake outside fooled everybody, and he's running free, and they go two verticals a lot. And it makes one guy make a decision. If they're playing man, and the safety doesn't come over, yeah. Oh, let's have that one back. Grambling State takes their second timeout of the half. Already on top, 14-3. 9-18 to play here in the first half of the 46th annual Bayou Classic. Thanksgiving weekend tradition. And talk about a beautiful weekend here in New Orleans, guys. We've been oh, here before. Man. It's raining. It's, it is, it, it's balmy. I mean, we're talking late <laughs> September nice weather down here. Second down and 10. Oh, my. Elder off the right-hand side, spinning, finally taken down at the one. And it looked like Southern was completely faked out by that. Jeremy Hickbottom sold it, and Elder broke it off for 23. Pretty spectacular work off the right side by Kyrie Wade McLeod, the right tackle. He just washed the entire pile down, and then as Elder tried to turn the corner, everything was got free for him. You got to reward Elder right here, right, Buck? I would think so after that one. First and goal from the one. Elder with the ball. Elder up the middle. Touchdown, Tigers. Whenever they bring in big 88, Khalif Jackson, he lines up as that wing. He also comes with Darrell James. They went to that side, and that's a nice run. They paid it off well. Give the dog a bone. And I'm a score. Give it to me. Give it to me. Like getting the end zone at the Bayou Classic. Fred Williams. William Waddell, a mammoth right side of the offensive line. Just moving defenders against their will. Mendez tacks on the extra point, guys. Remember last year, 38-28. Southern put up 38 points. Still a lot of time, but they have dug themselves a hole, and Grambling State has got their offense rolling 21-3, to and it all started with the checkup on special teams. And they're making plays on special teams, turning. Those opportunities in the offense. Now you get Jeremy Hickbottom back onto the field with his talented running back. Keelan Elder behind that offensive line. Those guys with the raw thighs making it happen. Ain't no stopping now. Lay Bon Temp Roulet. And if you're a Grambling fan, you certainly like to let the good times roll here at the 46th Annual Bayou Classic. Grambling State on top, 21-3, as they have found their offensive mojo here inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Let's go back and look at that touchdown one more time, guys. And, uh, wow, almost just walked it. Well, you're going to see the snap here. Watch these linebackers. They stop right there. Those guys are looking in here, trying to find it. Good block out there. He has a chance to go here, but instead he just takes it right in. And the blocking by the offensive line is so good that Elder doesn't have to cut it back. You've got that backside H back there. You've got a jumbo package. Those guys get sucked in. Elder said, hey, I'm going behind the big boys. They're going to take me home because if I get a score at the Bayou Classic, everybody's going to know about it. <laughs> Elder, the red shirt freshman from Dallas, Texas, getting the start. Kevin Dominique, usually in there, he is out for this game. And so Grambling, which has been hampered by injuries and other off-field incidents is losing players, really showing up here in the first half, leading 21-3. And this time, they're going to let it go and just take the 25. 
So Southern will have an opportunity to try to get back on the board before the first half ends. Before that happens, let's check in with Lewis Johnson. All right, Todd. Well, everyone uh, looking at this game, but getting ready for the Battle of the Bands, which comes up in just a few moments. Uh, and for Grambling, they have four drum majors that will take their band out on the field. I've got one of them right here with me, Dejon Morris. You are a senior. This will be your second year leading the band out. Give us a sense of how early you guys begin working on this show for the Bayou Classic. As soon as we come in August 1st, we're working on the classic show. We take all our best stuff throughout the season, throw it in, sprinkle in the new new stuff, and that's the show. All right, so it's kind of a mix of a lot of things but special for today. Oh, yes, of course. All right, so now you guys have a thing called the precision drill. What is that? Explain it to everybody and how it affects what we're going to see at halftime. The precision drill is basically marching. We make a different formation, letters, numbers, different things to enthuse the crowd. All right. Um, I may try to get my guys, Todd Harris, and the rest of the guys up there to come down and do some of that precision drill. Do you think you can teach them? Oh, I could teach anybody. You can teach anybody. There you go. And by the way, his father is one of the band directors, so this is kind of an all-in-the-family thing. We're going to talk to the Sussex drum major in a moment. Thank you so much. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah, Lewis asking him to do the impossible. I mean, there's, there's no ah. way I'm going to do that. Hey, Are you kidding me? Stay no, I can't lane. do that. Just stay right here, baby. Don't stay right like here. I, I saw a hitch. I can't even do that. <laughs> Every time that brass section gets going, you're moving those hits. Yeah. Uh, Third uh, down and six. <laughs> Looking forward to that halftime show, the Battle of the Bands. We got a good one here. Grambling on top, 21-3. As Southern had a beautiful grab there, just right at the first down marker by Ty Bedford, number 14. The crossing routes have been a bugaboo for for Skelton. It's just something about it not being able to get it to you guys so he can run and make some yards after catch. They got to get that fixed, but they also got to catch. That's a hard catch because you're trying to go opposite with your hands. Good job of bringing it in. First and ten. And they'll keep it on the ground for a short game with Monty Bell. Uh, John, ben, excuse me. I, I really think they need to add Ladarius Skelton to the run game even more than we've seen so far. That's really what tends to get his game going is when he can turn the corner. And every once in a while, he'll even pitch a field extremely late the on the option read. And his teammates tend to do a really nice job of staying in position when he does. But his legs are what gets this offense turning. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that's the one thing. When he gets in a certain rhythm in the run game, it just puts him in a better light. I think they're going to take a look at this. Look at something here. The officials have decided to stop play. I'm going to wait to get the word from referee Tony Ross, but it's kind of strange. Play it. Stop. Referee yeah. walked over, picked up the ball. <laughs> and both teams are just going to head to their sideline and talk it over their coaches. Well, it was a double clutch yeah. right. grab that was made there by T.J. Bedford. And at 6'4", I mean, it was an impressive effort that he yeah. made to go down and essentially low point the ball that was thrown behind him and a bit underneath him. He even used, you saw it yeah. there, yeah. used his right foot to sort of kick it back up to himself as well. But it never looked like it touched, touched the, the ground. ground. Yeah, and he kept his arms underneath. I makes, mean, you, he, makes you think of that great Super Bowl catch off the helmet. Oh, yeah. I mean, he does a nice job. Oh, I... But here's the thing. If you call it a catch, you have to have indisputable <laughs> video evidence. Yep. So are they going to have another look? Is this the only look we see? It'll be interesting. And the thing to keep in mind is the ball is allowed to touch the ground. It may graze the, the turf. Confirmed. Complete pass. Yeah, I think they did. So yep. they're going to call it a completed pass, meaning yeah. not enough visual to overturn right. the well, call that was made on the field. I think Ant said the best thing. You can't. It, the ball touches, but it doesn't move or anything. Right. He had control of it. He had possession of it. Dawson Odoms feeling like finally something going his way, so they will. Move the chains. It will be a first down. 7.22 to play. And the ball resting just inside the 35. Southern has to find some way, guys, of getting some balance between what Skelton can do with his legs and his arm and the rest of the team because they seem to be getting, they can't get out of second gear. Yeah. Skelton with time in the pocket. He's going to take off and run. Cuts it back inside. 
and initially met. Looked like he was going to break away momentarily. He'll be stopped just short of the 40-yard line by number 34, Jeremy Carter, the senior out of Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah, Jeremy Carter comes up, and that's the one thing they're taught. All these linebackers, safeties, if he scrambles, make him pay. Yeah. Come up and lay the wood to him just so he knows you're there. So brings up a second down in five. And a nice give on the right-hand side. And they're going to pick up another first down. So Cameron Mackey comes back after going in motion from right to left. Takes the ball. That's another Jaguar first down after the pickup. Good nine. decision. Watch how many players are there. And three defenders go to, go to Skelton. And, and, I mean, they make him... He keeps the ball, but everybody is right there. And, I mean, Cam Mackey is able to get outside because Skelton takes those defenders away. So it's a first and 10 from the 49. 617 now to play in the first half. Skelton, he's going to go for a big one downfield, and no one there. Great coverage on the outside by number four, Damian Krumatai. He's looking for Mackey once again. Well, while the, the throwing rhythm, I'd say, of Ladarius Skelton is still a bit off, I think the offensive line right now for the Jaguars is starting to take this particular series over. But what they're getting done up front in pass protection and moving the pile in the run game is something this offense can continue to build off of. Second and ten. And with 6 7 to play in the first half, guys, it looks like this might be... Ball batted away. Beautiful job by the defense. As number 32, DeAndre Hogues comes in and knocks that ball down. I was about to say, this is one of those series where Southern needs to get something out of this. Yeah, it looks like that's one of those situations where if you can't get to the quarterback, Hogue watches his eyes and just puts his hands up there perfectly. Perfectly placed so he can't complete that pass. They're green-dogging him, which means as a linebacker, you're initially in a spy position. If you see the opportunity late to blitz, then you go ahead and take it if you don't have a coverage responsibility. Third and ten. Skelton looks one way, comes back the other, and it's right at the marker. The question is, did he make the catch? And they say, yes, he did. He's still aiming the ball, right, Charles? Yeah, so I, even I just in the pocket, so, yeah. when it's clean, you can see him. The mechanics are there, but it just feels a little bit hesitant. And Mackey has been the go-to receiver. They haven't moved the chains yet. They're signaling that he has the mark for a first down, but it looks awfully close from this vantage point, fellas. Mm. Good job of Mackey going down and digging that out. Right now, we've got a fourth and short on the sticks, the way it looks. Yeah. So it, it makes a lot of sense. I think, Southern, you need to go for this. Yeah. It's a perfect decision. So it's fourth and in inches. As the clock continues to run, Ben alone back. And now the referee's going to come in and say, move the chain. So Tony Ross blew the whistle and just starts saying, hey, fellas, that's a first down. He's got better eyes than me. He eyeballed it from way back there and said, that's a first. Operator, please reset the game clock to five minutes and 34 seconds. 534. They're gonna get back 30 seconds and a first down. <laughs> What'd you call that, Anthony? Green dogging? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's a, a delayed blitz, essentially, is what it turns into. Linebacker's dog, basically. That's what we, how, how we identify it, is how they say it. First and 10 now from the 41, Skelton. Goes one way, cuts back the other, and there's a host of black and gold to meet him, and it'll be a loss of two, led by 32, DeAndre Holmes. But that play is made by DeAndre McCarthy, who we don't call. Watch 53. He's also going to be right there in that hole and stop it, and then it, it takes it right back to Holmes. They sent a lot of pressure and dog blitzes with their linebackers in that A-gap, if you saw it right there. Holmes stayed home and was rewarded making the tackle on the elusive Ladarius Skelton. Flow, fill, and thump is what linebackers like to do. They flow to the hole, they fill the hole, and then they thump you when they get there. Second down and 11. Skelton looking downfield. Beautiful pass up, and the catch is made. 
Receiver stays on his feet and dragged down at the three. Huge play for Southern. Cameron Mackey has become the receiver du jour on this drive. Best ball of the night from Ladarius Skelton. Pocket begins to break down a bit late, but he steps into it, and Mackey able to go up and high point the ball. He's only 5'9". Went up Willis Reed style, about 6'9", hauling this one in. Great throw, outstanding catch. Now the Jaguars in position to strike. Bad angle by Keenan Fontenot. And you can see DeAndre McCarthy back there trying to get his hands up, but couldn't quite get to that. And that's how you drop the ball in between the linebacker level and the safety and the DB level. Going up there and high pointing that ball, knowing the safety's yeah. probably bearing down on you, but he makes the catch. He put the little elf on the shelf way <laughs> up high, right? <laughs> Got it. And there is an injured player down on the field for Grambling. Don't have a number just yet. It looks like it is number 53, DeAndre McCarthy. I could call his name a whole lot, but man, he, he plays so well in this in this defense. It is indeed McCarthy being helped up to his feet. Yeah, yeah, Coach told us he's undersized. They say he's always said he's been too small, too slow to make a difference, and he said he really plays with a chip on his shoulder. That's not the kind of chip I want to run into at 5'11", 210. They call those bolder guys. They play with a big old rock, and if you try to knock it off, they're going to knock your head off. Look at him. He's, yeah. he's mad. He wants to get back Put in. Me back in. <laughs> The advantage for Grambling State is that they tend to rotate a lot of bodies defensively, so you lose a player the quality of DeAndre McCarthy, but you've had a lot of bodies that already rotate through that are accustomed to playing in big moments. So it's a first and goal situation for Southern. Empty backfield. Oh, that's one case where Skelton may have wanted to give that ball away as Martavius Dotson comes up and introduces himself. I thought Dotson was going to tackle both Skelt and the fly <laughs> sweep guy in that instance. He was just like, I'm determined to tackle somebody. That was a nice job by him, though, of coming off, being the edge guy that has to keep contained, and then going in hard, making that tackle. Second down and goal. Remember, Southern was here in the first quarter and had to settle for a field goal. Skelt looking back. Fires. Touchdown, Jaguars. Hunter Register has now caught a touchdown in seven straight games. Anthony talked about this drive being one where Southern really did a nice job. Skelton did it with his legs, he did it with his arm, and then you get in a bunch formation tight, and it takes everybody, you see those eyes, all the defensive backs looking inside, then you run that quick out, that's six. Marcus Britton. Marquise Britton, excuse me, was kind of caught inside, looking. You, your eyes go in there, you're done. Extra point is up and good by Fontenot, and it's 21-10 as Southern gets the touchdown they so desperately needed. Find spaces inside the 10 to create space. Find the bus formation to go for transfer. And then when a quarterback throws that ball, he gets it outside. You see the game, you see everything back there, but you see touchdown as well. Equip each individual for professional success. We are Southern. The Bayou Classic second quarter is presented by Procter & Gamble's Old Spice. Old Spice is irrationally committed to eliminating sweat. Procter & Gamble's Old Spice is a proud sponsor of the Bayou Classic. Procter & Gamble was founded over 180 years ago. Today, Procter & Gamble is the world's largest consumer goods company and home to iconic trusted brands that make life a little bit easier in small but meaningful ways. Procter & Gamble fan zone as we get ready. All due respect to the UFC, guys. We've got a big heavyweight clash coming up at halftime with the human jukebox taking on the world-famous Tiger marching band. Let's look at this touchdown one more time. Oh, you get the DB to look at his side. He's peeking, and Hunter Register is so effective on those situations where he can go up and get the ball, but right here was this nice, easy-growing catch for Skelton. 
the hunter register. You guys have talked about Skelton having issues on his throat. That was a yeah. that was a thing of beauty. He just stepped back and zipped that right in. Credit to the offensive line. They took the oh, game yeah. over on that drive. From the five. Turns right into Columbia Blue and makes them pay. And that is a nice bit of return work by number 27 for Grambling State, Justin Richard. He takes it out to just about the 20-yard line. As we set it down to Lewis Johnson. All right, the Southern Band has made their way down to the near sideline because they'll be hitting the field first. I've got with me Trayvon, Se uh, Trayvon Caesar, who is a senior. Now, Trayvon, you told me that when you were a sophomore in high school, you saw this band at the SWAC championship game, and you said, maybe one day I can be a part of that band and lead it. Today, you lead the band out for the third time as a drum major. What have you learned over the three years about the importance of this moment? The importance of this moment, I've learned over these three years that it's, it's just an amazing moment. From me and my senior classmates, there's no moment like the Bayou Classic man. No moment like the Bayou Classic. All right, now let's talk about the show. How long have you guys been working on what we're going to see at halftime? We've been practicing hard for the past two weeks. Two weeks, and then how do you uh, script the show like this? Is it something that takes uh, maybe several weeks and then you actually start practicing for two weeks, the last two weeks? Well, the band directors, they have their plan, their formula, and then they just give it out to us, and we make it happen. You execute it, and finally, when you go out as the director, uh, as the drum major, what's your mindset when you hear that whistle blow and those drums start beating and you, and you high step out there? My mindset is always be confident and have tons of energy. All righty. Good luck to you. We look forward to seeing it. Thank you. Trayvon's ready, guys. How about you? All right. Lewis Johnson going full Dateline, getting the information out of Trayvon. <laughs> Just moments ago, 25-yard pickup by Keelan Elders. So, Bramley looking like they're looking for much more with under three to play as Raylon Richardson picks up that one. And the ball now inside Southern Territory at the 42. I'm telling you, this halftime show, fellas, this is what a lot of people come to the Big Easy for this weekend to see the Battle of the Bands. You don't want to miss the human jukebox going up against the world-famed Tiger Marching Band. Grandlin looking for more, doing a great job is Jeremy Hickbottom, guys. Talk about taking what the defense gives you. He is just dinking and dunking him right now. Richardson is the man he's gone to two times in a row. So a big run by Elder and two catches by Richardson and pick up of nine. The other big thing with the run is this is a Southern defense that's usually pretty stout against the run. But Grambling has found those running lanes, and when they do, it's Elder or C.J. Russell. They've gashed his team in the run game. Second down and short before they can get the playoff. Whistle's called. And extracurricular activity as they introduce one another. Southern. It's their first time out of the half. And Southern this takes the timeout. Time Dawson Odoms wants to talk about this one. Now, this is a situation, guys, if they can keep them out of the end zone, even if they kept him to a field goal, 24-10, he could probably live with that. 28-10, not so much. That's the thing, going into the locker room as the, the halftime show approaches for these football teams <laughs> heading in for the half. If you're Southern, from their perspective, they've seen a lot of chunk plays racked up by Ramblin State with their offense. But if you can come up with something, at least a, a field goal attempt where your defense becomes more stout here, then it just enhances what you just saw from your offense putting a great drive together. And this is for the right to win and play against Alcorn State. That goes to the winner of this game and the SWAC championship. And I think we mentioned already that Grambling beat Alcorn State early this year on November 9th, 1960. It wasn't a pretty game, but they got it done. But Southern took the loss to Alcorn. Second down and one. Plenty of time with 212. Elder, outside, inside, hard running yards. and gets popped at the end. Enough for a first down as he picks up four. Caleb Carter comes and lays the thump, but nice job blocking up front by Khalif Jackson right there. You can see, El Ooh. 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 you feel it. That'll clean you out a little bit. Nice run. You get, you're going to lower the shoulder, and then boom, you get hit. Montavious Gaines was there to set him up, and Carter comes in and cleans up the mess. First and 10 now inside the 30. Plenty of time. Hickbottom looking around, and that one's broken up. Pass was broken up by number 18, Benjamin Harris, the junior out of Peoria. Great reaction. 
pocket's clean. Hickbottom's able to hold it. And right at the last moment, Harris drives on the ball, comes downhill. He got beat on the touchdown earlier by Raylan Richardson on the opening drive of the game. Had a great reaction that time from Harris. Second down and 10. 137 to play in the first half. Brandon State still with the timeout. Pass goes out to the flat. Richardson once again, this time it is all Columbia blue jerseys surrounding him. He can't even get back to the original line of scrimmage. That looked like me trying to get home when the street lights was coming on, and I, I wasn't going to get there in time. I, I knew I was going to get it when I got home. He said the same thing there. I'm going to catch the ball, and I'm going to fake one out, but I got about five of them coming at me. The lights are going to go out, and I'm going to be in trouble. Loss of one with Montavious Gaines, number five, making the stop for the Jaguars. So third and 11. Higbottom now is going to let this one fly. He overshot his receiver. And receiver looking back to the side judge, Raylan Richardson, saying, did you see him holding me? There's no way. Uh, Richardson thought he was going to do something else, and he kind of stopped. And Higbottom was thinking, I'm taking this to the house. He's throwing it all the way in. And Charles, we don't see as much consistent blitz from yeah. Southern as we do from Grambling State. That time, they brought the house, left the corners, the entire secondary one-on-one. -on -one. And that time, O.J. Tucker able to hold up in coverage. So Tamara Smith doing a great job in the secondary. And that's going to bring up fourth and 11. So they're going to go for a long 46-yard field goal. And that is nowhere near where it needed to go. Miguel Mendez off the mark, so a big stand for the Southern defense with 50 seconds still to play here in the first half. 21-10 remains the score. I want to remind you, next Saturday, Manchester City continue their quest for a third consecutive title when they take on their fiercest rivals, Man U. The 179th Manchester Derby, next Saturday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, only on NBCSN. As the bands get set for the big show at halftime, the Grambling State World Fame Tiger Marching Band getting into position. Meanwhile, the Human Jukebox Southern Marching Band waiting their opportunity. So opportunity here for Southern to possibly get down. Remember, they've got two timeouts left, and looks like Dawson Odoms is going to... Nope. Timeout. Southern. The second timeout. Of the half. He makes a reception, and he is going to call a timeout. So 42 seconds to play. Southern down 21-10. And one time out remaining. Please to set the game clock to 44 seconds. Tight end at UCLA 44 at seconds. You dial up here. Well, I mean, they've, they've done a nice job with getting Cameron Mackey involved, but I also think there's going to be some legs being used by Skelton. Getting him out, that seems to get his rhythm going. He's a straight drop back passer. He's not as good as when he can get outside and make some plays happen. And the right to play Alcorn State is on the line. They have clinched the East Division. West Division looks like this. Southern at 5-1, Grambling at 4-2. The winner of this game will meet Alcorn State for the SWAC title. There can be a misconception sometimes that because Southern and Grambling, when they meet in the Bayou Classic, it's normally for the right. West Division. But there's depth in the SWAC, man. They've each been really hotly contested in a number of their games this season. They've just been able to withstand it. Second down and six, receiver wide open. It'll be first down and much more as the receiver just slides down at the 47. Brandon Hinton making the reception. Beautiful pass once again by Ladarius Skelton. Ball is set, clock runs. Skelton looks once, now looks downfield, now lets it fly. And he is caught. Hunter Register. The 15, the helmet comes off, so he will have to go out. Look at this hang time. Former Minnesota Golden Gopher, six foot five frame register. One on one on the outside with Ryan Fields, able to go up and get it. A 38 yard strike for Southern, and they are back in business. Just 30 seconds ago, they were hoping to keep Grambling out of the end zone, and here they are knocking on the door. One of the best throws by Skelt. And getting that ball out, you let your big guy go up and get it. Nice play. Nice 
effort on the ball going up high Ryan Fields trying to make a play on him and he's a perfect coverage yeah. position <laughs> but register is just I got this now the helmet comes off at, in a situation where he's trying to take it off <laughs> fortunately for him the official that throw the flag because you've seen that happen it was the okay. enthusiasm that took the helmet off <laughs> well you want to take the top off as a receiver, but you don't yeah. necessarily want to take your own top <laughs> off. Exactly. We just saw. So, but, guys, just a couple minutes ago, it was 21-3. It looked like Grambling State was going to run away with this. Now it's 21-10 with Southern knocking door. If they get in the end zone and cut this thing to four, oh, my, the momentum that they'll have coming out in the second half. It's a Bayou Classic. Right? Yeah, every year we see this, right? <laughs> 24 seconds to go. Both teams. I like that Bramley State has one timeout left. Southern out of timeouts. Skelton, plenty of green in front of him. He'll throw it, and that ball skips. Looking for Ty Bedford, number 14, and that was a long toss on the run. Skelton mechanically as he's rolling. Uh, no, wait left. a second. That looked like it bounced off his hands. Yeah, they're going to take a look at this. And it looked like Bedford's hands were on there, and that's what the ball's hit. The previous play is on the further review. Generally, as a receiver, you know what your quarterback does well and what he doesn't do well. And these guys have done a nice job of being middle infielders. Mm. Getting, yeah, I mean, that's a close one. It looks like maybe the nose of the ball split his hands. But my point is, they know that sometimes there's some going to be passes where they have to go and dig it out. And they've done a nice job of selling it and getting under and really attacking the football when it's it's been in the ground or close to being in the ground. Guys, this is a huge break for Southern because had he made that catch, the clock would still be running. And Southern out of timeouts. And they would have been at the, uh, what is it, the 10-yard line or so? Well, the... They would have been able to move the chains and pick up the first down based off it, but they would have had to hurry up and get over the ball to spike it and kill the clock. But the clock would have momentarily stopped because it looked like the yardage was going to be enough to move the chains and you're inside of two minutes here. So the clock would have momentarily stopped, but it, it is a very close one to your point, Todd, where it's going to be up to them to determine whether or not his hand yeah. is split so far if the nose of the football bounced off the ground or if it was fully his hands underneath it. Is there enough visual evidence to give them clear indication. See, here he is. On the further review, the call has been reversed in a completed catch. It's completed pass. And to my room, he did have there will be a 10-second runoff. It will be this side of the first team. down on the four-yard four line. Zone. First down. First down does stop the clock. 18 seconds. Lost first and goal. Please Southern the in game business. Clock no timeouts. Seconds. Well done. Quickly hurrying in position over the ball. Yeah, so the 10-second runoff is kicked in. And now all the officials are going over the southern side to explain to Coach Odom. That I don't, I'm wearing, so it goes from 18 to 8, and is he just arguing for the sake of, you know what, this is called a generate uh, manufactured yeah, I'm timeout? Not, I'm, I'm not certain offhand why that would be a 10-second runoff. Yeah, I'm not either. And I think Coach Odom just saying the same thing. I mean, if you get the first down, that, that way you're going to be in position. They have to move the right. chain to exactly. reset. set. And I think that's what Southern has done a nice job of going in position. Therefore, there will be no 10 second runoff. No 10 second Please runoff. Set the game clock to eight I guess he won that argument. Well, I mean, Ant and I are looking at each other like, what were they right. doing? Yeah, personally, there, there would have been no, no reason for a 10 no. second runoff. So now Southern in position like they should be because the clock yeah. will start. Cut down. Devon Ben, and they've got to hurry. They've got no timeouts. They got to clock this thing. Three, two. Oh my! Flag on the play. Hold now, everything. It may be Grambling messing with the snap, which could be why we see the flag. Or did Grambling take too long? No, the and allowing Southern to no, get the, the official struggled to get the ball initially, anyway. <laughs> but when they brought it there, let's see. Can't have snaps. All sides. Defense. Number 91. Half the distance to the goal. Second down. With zeros on the clock. 
Please put one second on the game clock. Dawson Odom, there's no way he's kicking a field goal there, is there? There's no way. They bring in Big Sims because he's a short yardage and goal line runner, like Ant said, and I think that's the one guy you're going to look at and then also look at this right Come side on. of the So, the fellas, line. they put this one second back on the ahead. clock. Coach Bob says, you know what, I've got a timeout. I might as well use it here. <laughs> this is huge, and this is just the first half. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Bayou Classic. Oh, you got to love it. got to love it. So, so here's the scramble to get to the line, and I thought for a second they were going to try to clock it with two seconds. Everyone's motioning he's going to clock it. And that's what they should have done. And Skelton goes under center. Oh, clearly, Graham moves offside. And honestly, you don't necessarily have anything to lose there in that case if you're grambling, you know, right. half the distance yeah. to the goal or whatever. But they were getting it snapped in time to attempt to clock it. So there, you're trying to anticipate it, see if you can get out, make a, a big play really quickly in that scenario. All right, th this is a big decision. I, I don't think, yeah. I don't have a problem with Dawson Odoms going for it here, but you could just take the easy points and make it a one-score game to close the half. Gerard Sims, the lone setback. Final play of the first half, 21-10. Grambling State on top. In. Gerard Sims punches it home after one of the strangest final first halves here in the Bayou Classic. Freshman out of Opelousas, Louisiana. Some of my people down there, but he does a nice job of just running behind that offensive line. I said between behind the right side of the line, he starts there and then he works his way right where the center was for the former A gap, and he's in for six. Jalen Brinson plays with what Dawson Odom says is a pit bull mentality. He moved the line of scrimmage on the inside. 21 17 as the first half comes to a conclusion. Coach Odoms. Just five, six minutes ago, his team was down 21-3, make it 21-17. He's not very big on the inside, but look at 58. Snaps the ball, all the pad level there on the inside. He's got those guards, no pulling right there. They are moving the point of attack. Kyle gets wise, true freshman, into the paint with the Jazz. If you don't have any dark colored jerseys coming on your side, your offensive line is winning. Jonathan Bishop, look at this one coach is happy. Another one. Problem. Broderick Fobbs can't be happy the way that first half ended. He's standing by with Lewis Johnson. Well, I tell you, I thought we were moving the ball extremely well. We got to do a little bit better job on first down. That's kind of getting us behind the chains a little bit. Defensively, we started off well. We started out in the rhythm. A couple plays here, there. You know, they got down there on us and was able to put it in. So we're playing well. We just got to play a little bit better in certain spots. And so, All right, Coach. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Todd. Grambling State will get the ball to start the second half of the 46th annual Bayou Classic goes to the half with Grambling State on top 21-17 as the Battle of the Bands gets ready to take place in the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. But right now, one half in the books, 21-17, Tigers on top of the Jaguars. We will send you to the studio after this short break. You are watching the 46th annual Bayou Classic live on NBCSN. It is halftime in the Bayou Classic in New Orleans, Grambling State leading Southern 21 to 17. But right now it is time for the Battle of the Bands. The Human Jukebox leads things off. Enjoy. Peace on all the way back. 
As always, the battle of the bands continues. Up next, Grambling State's world fame marching band. That is coming up right after this. 24224. That's P R U S T. 24224. And welcome back. Halftime of the Bayou Classic in New Orleans. The battle of the bands continues. Now it's time for Grambling State University, the world famed Tiger Marching Band.
young men and women. The battle of the bands in the books. Meanwhile, in the football game, Grambling State leads Southern 21 to 17. Back out for the second half right after this. Than life. What happens when these giants go head to head? Wednesday night hockey on NBCSN. Welcome back to New Orleans. Halftime wrapping up here at the 46th annual Bayou Classic, and the fans did not disappoint. What a show! We still got a half of football to play, and what a first half it was. Yeah. Guys, I'd say 30 minute half, 25 of that was controlled by Granby, but it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Todd Harris alongside Charles Arbuckle and Anthony Heron will check in momentarily with Lewis Johnson. Buck, I'll start with you. Grambling looked like they were in full control of this game. They really did. I mean, they were coming out, doing the things that we talked to them about doing. That's why they've been on this game, the six-game winning streak. And a part of it is the running game, really setting everything up to make Hickbottom feel much better. Elder was able to run inside. He was able to get outside, but he was effective. You see how he's running downhill, looking for people to run over. The first guy never really took him down. And you can see here, this offensive line was just really pushing. It looked like the game was in complete control by Grambling. And Dawson Odoms has talked a lot this season, guys, about the mentality of his football team. There's been games where they haven't started that fast, looking for the focus. And as the first half wore on, that's really where Southern was able to work their way back into it. So 21-3, to three guys, with about five minutes to play in the first half. And then Southern woke up and found their offense. <laughs> they did. And it was really both the offense and the defense that got them going. Ladarius Skelton started to throw the ball well from within the pocket. The offensive line started to move guys off the ball. And it gave him the additional comfort that was necessary to start passing with more comfort. To start being more decisive with the way he delivered the football to the outside. Certainly using those legs, extending the play both inside and outside the pocket. And then you had the true freshman, Gerard Sims able to get it into the paint, getting Southern right back into this contest. Getting a touchdown with one second to go in the first half. 21-17, the halftime score. Grambling State will get the ball first. We set it down to Lewis Johnson. All right, Todd. Uh, Coach, what did you see in your team as you closed out the first half of this game? And now what do you need to close out this game to get to the SWAC championship? I mean, we got to play better on defense. Uh, uh, we got 21 points in the first, first half. Right. Too many beat runs. Uh, Hopefully, make a couple adjustments in the second half, but we got to get off the field. They're running the ball too kind to I like it. All right, as always, thank you, guys. Thank you. Doc? Dawson Odoms in his eighth year at Southern. Southern on a three-game win streak of their own, their last game victory at Jackson State, where they put up 40 points and yielded it 34. So they are capable of some big points, but here in the Bayou Classic, whole different story as Grambling came out. Early guys seemed to be in control of the game until, as we said, that last five, six minutes, and then Southern woke up, and it looked like, as you guys had said, Ladarius Skelton really found his throwing touch because he had two or three beautiful passes at set up. Harris at the right tackle position, 6'8", 325 pounds of him. He started to dominate the point of attack. Come and talk to me. <laughs> I bet you got that all the time. I knew you were get that joke. Yeah, I did. <laughs> nice return as C.J. Russell brings it back inside the 25, and that's where the Tiger offense will take over. I laugh because I go to a barber shop. I, I used to in Charlotte, where they were they were cousins of one of the barbers. So I'd hear J Casey and JoJo stories all the time. Really? <laughs> Anthony, how many times when I was going through the story and left talking about that before we came on here, did he drop that Jodeci line? Over and over again. Here we go. <laughs> I'm done. Well, you got, you got some we'll talent, Charles. We'll see. No, I'll look out on it. So here we go as the winner will take on Alcorn State in the title game of the SWAC. You get the bragging rights for the whole year. Remember, Southern won it last year. Three years prior to that, it was Grambling State. And a run here with a flag coming out. That would be first down yardage if it stands as Keelan Elder picking off where he left off in the first half. We talked about Kevin Dominique is out. He's the yep. starter. But Keelan Elder, he has just really oh, played well. Offense, number 61, 10 yard penalty, replay first down. The key with him is the first guy can't bring him down. It seems to be you have to come to the party and you better bring your pads low. Unfortunately, that was a hole there. If you're grambling, nice run. You got to let him go. Oh, boy. Did David Moore get his money's worth there, though? David Moore may be the best old lineman, but he, he was really wrapped up on that defensive back. Right back to Elder on the 
first and 20. Taken down by Calvin Lunkins, who we talked about at the top of the show. Young man from right here in New Orleans went to Warren Easton High, two time SWAC defensive player of the week and the anchor of that Jag defense. Weekly game from a turnover standpoint, even though we had that turnover early in the game by Southern not being able to fill the, the kickoff. Second down and 11, they bring everyone in. Randlin picks it up, but there's really no room to run there as he dropped it off to Lyndon Rash. And Rash tried to pick his way forward, only picking up about two yards. It'll bring a third and long. And you're, if you're Southern, Anthony, I got to think you want to keep that momentum going that you had over the last five, six minutes of the first half. An opportunity to get yep. a three and out here, coming out of the locker room. Spacing is really important with as many screen passes as Grambling State runs there. Lyndon Rash was a bit too tight to run that tunnel screen. So third down and seven, the ball resting at the 27. Pick bottom pressure, gets the ball away, and I'm surprised the flag was not thrown because the receiver he was looking for, Dequarius Thomas, was being pulled by his jersey. I mean, that was right there. Calvin Lunkins there on the coverage. This offensive line has done a pretty good job against Jordan Lewis, but that time Lewis is able to come around the edge and make Hickbottom step up. And when he does, he has to get rid of the football. Brandon Hinton retreats. Some great punting by Miguel Mendez. Unloaded a 55-yarder in the first half, which pins Southern way back. And this one a little bit shorter. Hinton will have a chance to pick it up at the 35. And they're going to blow this dead. Did he step out of bounds? No. I believe he's signaling a fair catch. Okay. And it almost looked like he was saying, Peter, Peter, get away yeah. from it. But he was down low, and they constitute that as a fair catch. Because he was going to be off the yeah. races after that 35 yard punt. Let's see one more time. Oh. Yeah. Ooh, that's the... <laughs> he was in that no man's land. He where... was hoping that no one caught that. <laughs> he wasn't quite down low. He was like right there. Sorry about that, Brandon. We got some great camera folks. They picked that up. <laughs> First and ten, good field position for Southern. Do they have the momentum still on their side? And brought down quickly at the line of scrimmage. Really no gain there. Great defensive stand. They rotate a lot of bodies through here yep. for Grambling's defense. It keeps them fresh. It allows them to play with energy. Don't Donald Freeman yep. getting more of an opportunity here. We saw DeAndre McCarthy after the game earlier. So Skelton dragged down. They're going to show us a loss of one. Bring up second down and 11. First man miss, runs into a pile of black and gold jerseys, and he really is not going to get any positive yardage there. It's right back to the line of scrimmage. Well played by the Tigers. You got to love it. Yeah, yeah just what, what Damian Primity was able to do in fighting off that block. He had a receiver stock blocking and trying to cut him down. He's able to work over that cut block. Didn't secure the tackle himself, but able to do enough to allow his teammates to flow. That was a teaching tape. You saw all those guys at the end right around the football. They all get stars for being aggressive and hustling to the play. Third down and 11, empty backfield for Skelton. He fumbles the snap, and the ball is just put on the turf. Saw that earlier today in the Michigan-Ohio State game where Patterson took his eyes off momentarily, hit him in the hands, and that's going to be a loss of three. Did you see the glare from mm. Ladarius Skelton oh, yeah. afterwards, too? <laughs> Can't <laughs> put that all on him, and that one hit him in the knees. Odom describes him as a high-energy guy. We saw him getting after his teammates a bit on the sideline earlier there. Nothing very verbal, but I think sometimes <laughs> a look says a thousand words. The glare <laughs> of Skelton. And, hey, Odom's has one, too, now. <laughs> right. I've seen him <laughs> looking at those guys. He had not to say a thing. They know <laughs> So Cesar Barajas in to put it away for Southern, and this is a low-line driver. The tech takes a bounce back, but it looks like it hit the foot of a Southern player right about the 37, we're going to call it the 40-yard line. As Southern having some issues, guys, and one more time, this is not the look you want for your quarterback if you're playing center. Not at all. Yeah, look he at covers that. it, find it, yeah, and cue the glare. 
Twenty-one seventeen, Grambling on top. In every fling, gain seriously good scent. The 46th Annual Bayou Classic on NBCSN is brought to you by Procter & Gamble's Game. Game Fling, seriously good scent. And by McDonald's, brought to you by McDonald's Black and Positively Golden. Join in and follow on Instagram at WeAreGolden. 21-17 with 11.09 to play in the third quarter here at the Bayou Classic in beautiful New Orleans, Louisiana. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Hope it was safe and you ate way too much as we get ready for the holiday season. Guys, lots of great college football being played around the country. Trophies on the line. There you see the Bayou Classic trophy and the SWAC West trophy. Because remember, the winner of this game will go on to play for the SWAC championship. And that's what it's all about for these two programs. But taking home the Bayou Classic trophy, also a nice little touch. It has so much meaning. It, yep. it gets families together. They get, are able to spend time here in New Orleans around Thanksgiving. And you know what? You circle on your calendar, yeah. and you know what you got to do when you get here. Eat way too much. <laughs> <laughs> that, and that a big shout-out to last night's dinner, Emeralds. How about oh, that? Yeah. That was a, that was a scary good. First and ten. Bramley State goes back to business. A nice pickup on first down, a about four yards as Darkeith Bruton comes into the game and picks up some nice yardage on that fly sweep. Ball, redshirt freshman out of Tallahassee, Florida. Ed's Kaku defending. We haven't seen a strike opportunity from Grambling offensively in a while. As far as just Hickbottom being able to stand in the pocket, attempt some deeper passes, a lot of lateral nature to the yep. offense the last couple of series. Devontae Davis is really their stretch receiver for Grambling State, number 82. Hickbottom rushed, and he's had two receivers in the same area. I don't know if he was going for Raylon Richardson or the other receiver that was crossing in front of him. Part of it also, too, is Jordan Lewis now seems to be dialing up pressure. They're getting it from both ends. So Hickbottom was not able to sit back. Remember that first half? He was sitting back with a clean pocket and yep. able to just fire the football at will. And we talked to Coach Broderick Fobbs of Grambling State earlier in the week, and he said Hickbottom needs to be more consistent. He has to hit the open man, and he needs to be meaner and a leader on the field. Like Skelton was on that yep. look yourself. Right? Give, give him a glare. Ball comes loose, and they're going to rule that a fumble is recovered by Grambling State, big number 77. Montre Jacobs falls on it, but Robert Square applying the pressure, getting right into Hickbottom's kitchen, guys. It looked like he had a man open early and just didn't want to go there, was looking for much more. We'll see the activity up front from Southern again between Jordan Lewis, Jalen Ivey getting penetration off a three-man rush. When you drop eight in the coverage, the anticipation is that the quarterback may have some time. Um, far more active to your point, Charles, Southern defensive front. So Miguel Mendez on for Grambling State to this one away. This is another beauty. Brandon Hitton retreats back to the 15. Cuts back and is taken down at about the 23, making the 24-yard line. 50-yard punt by Miguel Mendez, and the Jags will take over at the 23 when we return. One more time, getting right in the face of Jeremy Hickbottom. Tigers maintain possession and punt it away. 21-17, Tigers on top. Bigger than life. What happens when these giants go head-to-head? -head? Wednesday Night Hockey on NBCSN. Thanksgiving weekend in the Big Easy. Thanksgiving tradition, the Bayou Classic, the 46th edition with Gramley State on top, 21-17. The winner will face off against Alcorn State for the SWAC title. Todd Harris alongside Lewis Johnson, Charles Arbuckle, and the Iowa great Anthony Heron. Glad to have you with us as we take a look at the SWAC football standings. There it is once again, guys. In so many years, it's always come down to the Bayou Classic to see who gets into the SWAC title game. Alcorn has dominated the East Division yep. for a number of years now, but State Southern and Grambling State. It's like it should be. It comes down to this game to decide who goes to face them. They, they do it just for us. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, I want to remind you the 2000 Bayou Classic Field Goal Challenge is presented by Procter & Gamble's Crest Old Spice and Game. Visit pgeveryday.com to view all of Procter & Gamble's brands and coupons. Also learn how Procter & Gamble's brands are at your side to make every day more beautiful. It's the effort that counts, fellas, right there. Uh. Students from Southern and Grambling had an opportunity to kick a field goal for $2,000. As I say, the effort was there. It. Oh. It, it was there. Very, very similar kicks. There you go. So right now, Lewis is standing by with Damon Jones, the Vice President of Global Communications and Advocacy at Procter & Gamble. Lewis. John, thank you very much. We were able to watch that kick. Another great moment here. But just give us a sense of why it's important for you all to be involved with this game, the Bayou Classic. This is an excellent tradition. So much black excellence, support of black education is happening here. To see the families here, to see everyone gather just in the spirit of family and community. We want to be a support. Uh, they're just supporting the community that supports us year-round. And, of course, uh, your support is not just for this game itself and all the history, but other HBCUs. Uh, why the importance there as well? Education is so critical to every community, but especially our community. We've got a long tradition of supporting black colleges and university, and now more than ever, they need our support. So we're stepping up and leading the way in hopes that many people will come along that journey with us. And I'm sure this is much needed and much appreciated support. Great to talk to you. Belated happy Thanksgiving. Thank you as well. All righty. Todd. Thank you, Lewis. Thank you, Damon. Southern taking over at the 23-yard line, trying to get that offense cranked up to where it was at the end of the first half. That was the longest 15 seconds I've ever seen you hold. Going to start out keeping it on the run. Craig Nelson taking it for about a yard, yard and a half pickup. Guys, this is the point in the, in the game where it feels like someone can take hold of this thing. Someone can just I, put I together agree. a drive, and you, you're really going to put the other team in a bad way. Second and eight. And the ball off the hands. Looking for Nelson once again coming out of the backfield incomplete. Anthony and I are both looking at right. a lot. Oh, borderline. Yeah. Borderline. <laughs> Goal was too hot with that pass. Yeah. It came out a little hot. So, and, and Skelton has done a really nice job. Starting out, he struggled, but at, before that, he was 14 of 18, really doing a nice job throwing the football and getting it to his different weapons as he got comfortable. I think that long throw and then running, like Anthony said in the half, really got him more comfortable. Bringing up a third down and eight now for Southern. And the A gaps, Tigers prowling. They show blitz, they back out. Ball comes out, hot catch is made, and that's good enough for a first down. So the Jags will move the chains as the catch is made at the 35-yard line. 86 comes up with a grab. So ball hawking secondary, too, and that's a good a good concentration by DeLeon, DeLeon Richardson. Oof. That's inflicting some punishment. As Ben comes in and lowers his head, picks up 11 yards and another first down. I don't think you think twice about trying to tackle Ben up high. He's not a big man. He doesn't mind sticking his nose in there. You see the way he finishes that run. Xavier Lodge made the stop, but it's a first down. And again, back to the running game. And huge holes now for the... Jack's running attack as Ben breaks off another big one. Both of those behind that right side of the line with Jalen Prince in the center. Ooh. Look at that cut. Jonathan Bishop, Jodeci Harris, Jodeci Harris right there, all coming off the ball, knocking those black jerseys back. Another 15-yard pickup for Ben. First and 10 now, ball resting at the 38. Southern trailing 21-17. And the pitch. Good open field tackle, but another pick up about seven yards. It's not an easy thing to do, guys, especially finishing with a left-handed pitch, but I love the way Ladarius Skelton, he draws the defense to him initially. He advances on the defender. That sucks the coverage in before pitching it outside. That sets up the corner. Lodge was a nice takedown. Make it second down and four. Up the middle. A modified stiff arm there. It looks like it's going to be a Ben versus Lodge battle. The last three carries. How big is the absence of DeAndre McCarthy, who was all over the field in the first half? These guys are getting blocked up and Ben, not afraid to run you over when you come up to get him. It's a veteran group up front. 
on the offensive line for Southern. Randall really not liking the flow of this game. And head coach Roderick Fossil took his first time out of the half with 7.22 to go here in the third. 21-17, Grambling State on top of Southern here at the Bayou Classic. I mentioned all the experience, Todd, that they have yeah. up front on Southern's offensive line, and it shows in the manner that they don't run the same scheme over and over again. They, they run the zone scheme. They run some gap scheme as well, where you have the offensive line as opposed to stepping laterally in unison. They'll fire off the ball and move people off the line of scrimmage. So when you can attack the versatility with the blocking scheme, the defensive front can't get in a rhythm for how they hit blocks. All seniors up front except for Carter at the left tackle. And that's where the window dressing comes in with the motion and everything else. It gets you off kilter if you're a defensive player. First down and 10. Jack's threatening ball resting at the 20. 21-17. Really Man, they have just got no answer right now for Devon Ben. Hey, guys, and it's between the tackles. They're not trying to do anything outside on the edge. They're saying, okay, we're going to line our tackles and guards and center up. I'm going to punch you in the mouth. Are you going to respond or not? And right now, Grambling is not. Ben has carried it the last four times. He runs in 15, 12, 11, and 7. Second down and three. Ball resting inside the 15. They go right back to Ben. He's going to get some positive yards here. Pick up a maybe ben yard or two. Wesley Green almost got in there and made the play in the backfield. But see, they're starting to argue with each other a little bit. That happens right there. You get in somebody's face, you can talk to them, but don't touch them. That's usually the case in football, as you know. Brandon Wiggs not happy. And right now, Southern's got Grambling on the back heels. You guys always say all that between each other. Take it out on that other yeah. team. Exactly. Skelton looking over the field, backs up, and over the backfield. Tuck it and run. He's got a corner. He'll step out at the six. With the two Grambling defenders trailing a pickup of six. Great block by Ben, also to help spring him. When you have a quarterback that's mobile and athletic and can get a play, watch number two. See, he turns, goes against the block, and keeps him out of harm's way. Ben with a key block, springing his quarterback. First and goal now, the ball resting just inside the eight-yard line. Options here, Skelton, great runner. Ben has had a terrific drive here. Ben up the middle, and this time Grantley's there to stop him just outside the five. See that revolve motion? They, they always set things up. Now, if nobody is outside and paying attention, they can come back and we'll see an option. Fake it inside, zone read, and then skeleton keep it and go with whoever the revolve or the return motion guy is in that play. DeAndre Hopes with the stop. So bring up a second down and goal. and throws way over the top. A little too much adrenaline there as he was looking for his tight end and able to connect with him. The windows get tight down here when you're inside the 10, so I don't mind the throw there from Skelton because at least you're throwing the ball out of harm's way. Try to secure the fact that you won't end up coming up with a turnover in what's been a really effective drive. Travis Tucker was the target. Talk about it. This rambling team has... Four pick sixes and two fumble return touchdowns on the year. They are ball hawks, but Ladarius Skelton has protected the football. Third and goal. Skelton is going to go to the corner. Ooh, touchdown, Jags. No flag as Hunter Register gets his second touchdown of the game. And a lot of hand fighting there, guys, but they <laughs> let him play. I I'll focus on the throw, though. The throw was where it needed to be on that back shoulder, even though he's working away from it, which makes it one of those situations where Hunter Register, if he doesn't push off all the way, it still allows you to do that and get the ball. Watch this throw by Skelton. This is nice. Outside, I think it's hand fighting between both. 
I yeah. go up and I go grab it at its highest. Yeah. Twenty-one unanswered points put up by Southern, and they have taken the lead. They trail 21 to three. They now lead it 24-21 as Fontenot puts it through. It starts with the protection in the backfield there by Devon Ben, and then he sets up his mammoth playmaker on the outside back corner. Matched up with one of the better defensive backs for the Tigers. Rise and grind for Hunter Register. The PNC Father-Son Challenge, Saturday at 2 p.m. on Golf and 3 p.m. on NBC. The Bayou Classics third quarter is presented by Procter & Gamble's Game. Game plays is seriously good scent. Procter & Gamble's Game is a proud sponsor of the Bayou Classic. Procter & Gamble brands are at your side to make every day more beautiful. Beautiful sight here in New Orleans this weekend as the fans from Southern and Grambling State have made the annual pilgrimage to the Big Easy. And I'll tell you what, it has been sights, sounds, food. It has been quite a weekend here in the Crescent City. Let's go back to that last drive, guys, where Southern really got their mojo going with ground and passing. Made it happen. Up front, showing some love to this offensive line. Jeremiah Abbey pulling across, sealing the block to the finish. Right there by Devon Ben, only 190 pounds, running with all kinds of stuff. And the legs of Ladarius Skelton, a man is dangerous as they come at the FCS level. But flashing the arm talent as well on the outside. Reggie going up over the defense, making a hit. Ben runs hard. Right? That's the one thing when you turn on the tape and you watch him. He has no problem running by you, but he will run over you and right. through you if you come up on him. Russell pulling Elder back go into the end zone. And wait a second, he got, got, keep going. We got oh, a problem. Didn't, That's didn't gonna they be they a safety. Go. Oh my goodness. He stepped across the line, came back and took a knee. And it looked like Keelan Elder was telling him, go back, and he got a full head of steam. Unless, I don't think he knew where he was on the field. Right. Unless, unless he completely comes out of the end zone, his full body and the football itself, it will be ruled a touchback. If yeah. the ball never yeah. left the end zone, the end zone. therefore we have a touchback. Yep. Yeah. Now they're also saying he did a fair catch. I never saw I a fair see, catch. I never did either. Yeah. But to Anthony's point, yeah, the yeah. whole body, he kept one foot in. He did. Boy, that's that, a, right there, that's a dangerous place to be. Look at this. Much so. <laughs> It, it's too tricky when you do this. You give you give the officials an opportunity to make a call. <laughs> Dawson Odom, Coach Odom is highly upset. <laughs> you know what right now? That is not the best gumbo in town at Emeralds. I got him. He is fired oh, he up. Is it is the right upset. call, though. Anthony with a good catch there. The whole body has to lead. The end zone. So first and ten from the 25. Grambling. Wow, Southern is fired up. Their defense comes in as Keelan Elder has nowhere to go. Wrapped up for a loss of one on the play as Calvin Munkins comes in once again. The tandem they have at Mike and Will at linebacker between Munkins and Caleb Carter, they actually flopped since last season. Carter was the Mike, Munkins was the Will last season. But Calvin Munkins is the best communicator in Southern's defense. They moved him from the outside backer right there in the middle of all the action. He's the guy stirring the drink, making sure everyone gets lined up. Second down and 10, Lionel Washington, the defensive coordinator for Southern, trying to dial up some pressure. Pinkbottom steps up, he's got room to run. That room runs out after about a yard, yard and a half. So he will pick up one and he'll make it a Jacobian champion stop and it'll be a third down and nine. But it looks like this defensive line is also unleashing themselves. Yeah. Guys are going by, but those interior linemen are doing such a good job of not letting Hickbottom find running lanes either. Be a free play. Play this one out. Hickbottom's going to let it fly. Why not? Took a shot downfield. Doesn't matter. It'll be offside. He's looking for Kobe Ross. And that cover two over there. Safety over the top. Jordan Lewis has a great first step, but that was too good. Uh, not, you know, hadn't played a lot of high, high a lot of football. Offside. Defense, number 32. Five-yard penalty. 
that's called Three play third down. Yeah, he hadn't played a lot of football, uh, but very effective in his first step. You see where he started to take himself out of the game, too? <laughs> you can tell because they're so deep up front, he's accustomed to actually having to rotate out when he yeah. makes that kind of mistake. But in the end, they said, you know what? You're going to have to be the quarterback so well. We'll let that one slide. Yeah. He has a 95-yard uh, pick six and a 74-yard fumble recovery on the year. Third and four. Hey, bottom. Picks up the first down and then some uh, almost to midfield. And a huge run for Hickbottom. And they'll move the chains. And that is huge for Bramley State's defense. Not have to come back on the field. That's just the fifth carry of the game for Jeremy Hickbottom. And Bramley hasn't been sustaining drives as much here as they were in the early portion of the game. But he was their leading rusher coming in. So as much as we talk with Darius Scott being a part of the game, Hickbottom needs it as well. 16-yard pickup. They stay with the run. It'll be a 9-yard pickup. So like Southern... Grambling has found a good bit of running space as Keelan Elder picks up nine, making it second down and one. Guys, if they'd had a punt away to Southern, the way that Southern's offense been playing, the end as a helmet comes flying off, enough for a first down as Elder gets the call yet again. And the 75's helmet is thrown down. That's William Waddell, and he is not happy about it. Yeah, he's probably complaining that there were hands to the face. And when that happens, that helmet will pop right off. He'll have to miss at least one play. First and ten now from the 39. Quick run on the inside. C.J. Russell picks up a quick two. Champion and Champion making the stop. Second down. Guys, which of these teams do you think right now the way they're playing? I know they both played Alcorn State early in the season. Grambling won, Southern lost. Which one at this point do you think has a better shot at beating Alcorn for the SWAC title? Alcorn's so dominant on both sides of the football. Potential for the offensive and defensive player of the year in the SWAC. It's hard to say Fred McNair, the reigning SWAC coach of the year. Big bottom will keep it this time. Splits two defenders. It looks like he's going to be about two yards short. I think if you look at both teams, Grambling, they were in such a position where they had to have a backup quarterback come in and finally found a way to win. Southern, on the other hand, pushed them to the limit but couldn't quite get it done. I think if you've already beat them, you probably feel like you can go back in and do that again. Wasn't a pretty win, but they got it done. Third down and three for head coach Broderick Fox. Hoping they can refer and wow, what a great job by Jeremy Hickbottom. The junior from Mobile spins away. Devon, Devin Cotton finally gets him down, but not before he moves the chains. That offensive line did a nice job of picking up that blitz coming in the middle. And that allowed Hickbottom right there. You can see just everybody picked up right in the interior of that offensive line. And that allows him to get some positive yards. Nice five-yard gain, first and ten. Final minute of the third quarter. Southern has surged back in front after trading 21 to 3. Hickbottom with plenty of time. Hangs it up there. And his receiver comes back for it. What a play as Lyndon Rash had three Columbia blue jerseys around him from Southern and adjusted and came back and made the catch at the two. What a moment. This is for Lyndon Rash from Baton Rouge. Right there. Where Southern University resides. He wasn't recruited by the Jaguars. He brings his best game every time. Look at he this. I thought that was going to be picked off. <laughs> Vertical again. They like two verts. Safety almost overran it, thinking he was going to the outside vertical guy. Elder met at the two, and he goes nowhere. He might have lost a yard there. Elder with the carry. And that's a prime example where you don't anticipate where it's going to be thrown. You just go to where the play is. Benjamin Harris with a big stop there, and that will be the final play of the third quarter. Four fingers up in the air. We've got a good one here in New Orleans. Southern leads it 24-21, trying to make it two in a row. Come on back for a very exciting fourth quarter at the 46th Annual Bayou Classic. The future of fitness is at home. The Mirror. 
Next week on Wednesday Night Hockey, the reigning Stanley Cup champion St. Louis Blues are in the Steel City to face off against Evgeny Malkin and the Penguins. Wednesday Night Hockey, 8 p.m. Eastern only on NBCSN. Riverboats making their way up the Mississippi on a beautiful night here in New Orleans. And there you see the tail. Southern, 21 unanswered points to take the lead, 24-21. We're down to the final fourth quarter of the 46th annual Bayou Classic. Todd Harris, Charles Arbuckle, Anthony Heron, and Lewis Johnson down on the field in what has been a very interesting game, guys. Started out slow for Southern. They found their mojo. Their offense got cranked up, brought it down, scored the last play of the first half, and then came out and put another touch on here in the second half. And now Grambling has got to answer. I almost feel like a field goal there is a win for Southern. Yeah, I think when you look at this, Grambling's in a position where they have to come away with points to keep that momentum going, especially after that huge play before the end of the third quarter. Very quick third quarter as we start the fourth, second and goal. Grambling with the ball inside the four-yard line. Look at the QB lead play to the boundary. Pick bottom. Keeps it into the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers. That's what this drive's been about. The legs of Jeremy Hickbottom igniting the Grambling State on the offensive end. We talked to him earlier this week. We, I think Charles asked him, what quarterback do you kind of recognize with? I think he threw out Cam Newton. Yep. No Lamar Jackson. I had to remind him. <laughs> well, he also likes Tom Brady and Drew Brees' accuracy. But that run right there is a prime example to Anthony's point. Going into the boundary where you've got the big guys in the flank position that two tight ends set. And it just, they are able to ball something. Mendez splits the uprights, and Grambling State has gone back out in front, 28-24, 14-56 to play before a Bayou Classic champion is crowned. Remember, Southern won it last year, Grambling the three years prior. Keelan Elder leading the way, Jeremy Hickbottom, Reed on the run. We got a good one. Come on back to the Big Easy and wrap up your Thanksgiving weekend with the Bayou Classic here on NBCSN. Bigger than life. What happens when these giants go head-to-head? -head? Wednesday Night Hockey on NBCSN. 46th annual Bayou Classic on NBCSN is brought to you by Procter & Gamble. Procter & Gamble brands are at your side to make every day more beautiful. Visit pgeveryday.com to find out more. Grambling State back in front as they have taken the lead 28-24 as we set it down on the field in Lewis Johnson. Quite a few momentum swings. How big was that last touchdown now as we move through this fourth quarter? Well, it's big. You know, this is a game of momentum. And, you know, I've never seen a team lose a ball game when they don't have the momentum. So the good thing is we got the momentum now. We got to get a good kick right here and a good coverage to continue that. All right, we thank you. All right, thank you. Tom? And our thanks to Coach Fobbs, Lewis, for doing that interview as we get set to see what happens and what Southern can dial up. Remember, guys, he told us earlier in the week, the ball is the issue. Yeah. And I think that's going to play out here in the fourth quarter. I love what Coach Fobbs talked about, too, of being uh, a little boy in the stands, yeah. being a player on the field, coming back as a fan, and now being a coach for Grambling. I mean, yeah. it, that kind of brought chills to me because you can think about it over the course of time and how he's been able to see this from all different perspectives. Brandon Hinton drops back alongside Kendrick Jones. And Mendez sends this one deep, and he will take it at the three. Kendrick Jones stops the 15, cuts back inside, has a nice little seam there, and he'll be taken down just shy of the 26, and that's where Southern will take over. So now, Anthony and Charles, it's the mission of Southern to try to get that momentum back. With what you've seen in their offense, how do they get it done? Is it by the run, or is it by the pass, or a combo? I think it's both. I think they're going to start with the run because they've done a really nice job with Skelton and Ben and a combination of different running backs in there. And I think that's what they're going to have to do. Gerard Sims, when he's been on, he's been like a cameo actor where he appears and makes plays as well. And Coach Dawson Odoms in his eighth year won the Bayou Classic last year. Would like to make it two in a row. Punches taken into Dayton. Alcorn State with runs like that. That is certainly going to happen. What a break off by number 48, Gerard Sims. 
talked about it. He's a guy and a young man when you watch him on tape. This offensive line doesn't mind locking people up. You see him all up front. And he will hit that hole. One cut and I'm gone and I'm going to run over you if you come up and try to tackle. 25-yard pickup on first down as they are now sitting at the 49. Skelton lets this one fly. Trying to drop it in over the receiver. Almost a beautiful catch. Flag comes out. Kromatai was on the coverage as he was looking for Hunter Register, who already has two touchdowns in this one. I'm shocked that they threw a pick. Yeah, I was going to say, did you see enough there to throw the pass? Pass interference. No, I Defense. did not. Number 15. Apparently, 15 yards in it. did. Automatic first down. Automatic first down for Southern. So this is probably not the way that head coach Roderick Fox wanted to see Southern come out here and his team's defensive stand. They went with the wheel route, and initially, Register didn't declare open. I thought the, the coverage yeah. was spectacular by Chromatai. I, I disagree with that one from the officiating crew. So that ball now sits at the 36 of Granville. First and 10, 14-20 to play in this one. Southern down by four. Wow, wide open. And once again, it's 48 drops sent, and he is going to take this one to the house. There's no denying that young man who touched the freshman out of Opelousas, Louisiana. And that's the big boy running right there. Authoritative right here. Look at that. That whole interior line just boom. Grambling. Rod Sims says, I'm going in the house. Six. Biggest block that was made is at the left tackle to Tyree Carter. He's gained 25 pounds since last season. The red shirt sophomore been a starter since his red shirt freshman season showing why and Fontenot's extra point is blocked so it is a two-point game with 14 11 to play as the southern fans celebrate I feel like I'm almost at an English Premier League game as the fans are chanting this is this is something the place holds 75,000 plus not quite a sellout but I'll tell you what it is a healthy rivalry live and well Fontenot's extra point is blocked. Randick penetrating towards yep. the inside. Seeing several bodies from the Tigers in there. Two-point game here for Ben. Grambling is an education. An experience. Grambling is legacy, tradition, and future. What is Grambling? Grambling is all of this and more. Grambling is the place where everybody is somebody. Two-point game at the Bayou Classic as Grambling State trails Southern 30-28. And this is a game of highs and lows. And all you have to do is look at the face of Dawson Odom to see how Southern's doing. Just, just look at the face. It'll, it'll give you a good barometer of what's going on. Here you go. We're happy. That was right before halftime. Coming out in the second half, though, not so much. <laughs> he, he's not, he's not sugarcoating it. He'll let you know how he feels. What's the old song? What I'll you see you is what. what you get. There you go. That's with that face right there. And Lewis Johnson, the brave man, with the head coach right now. A lot of emotion from your part of these teams as this game progresses. What's important now as you guys move down the stretch? I mean, you got to execute. I mean, you playing again. And it's right football. You know, we got high-powered offenses. I mean, we got good skill guys, but defense, one, one of these defenses got to make a play. Uh, our guys got to rise to the challenge and play some football. All right, Coach, thanks for the access. Todd? Lewis Johnson is a brave man. Ventures into Jaguar territory and gets Doss Modems on a, on a good moment. No, it's only between the lines and with the officials is he going to be upset. <laughs> he already knew Smooth Lou was going to come over <laughs> and ask him a question. He's fine with that now. He may get upset in between the field of play, which is fine. <laughs> I just didn't want to give that stink eye to Lewis Johnson. No. <laughs> and that ball will go in the end zone, so they'll bring it up to the 25, 14-11 to play in the ball game as Grambling State looks to mount a comeback, which they couldn't pull off last year, losing by 10. I think Coach Odom said it best, though. There's got to be a defensive stop. 
and if both of these ball clubs have really gone to the run game to set everything up and it's really been predicated that way to set them up to make some plays now you see the history going back to 2012 southern won three then grambling won three southern winning last year 38 28 and here we go we've got a great ball game with 14 minutes to play in this one two-point game grambling state going back to the run C.J. Russell getting the call. You're seeing a lot of base from Southern on first and second down and then getting to third down before they really try to heat up Jeremy Hickbot. Russell taking the pitch. Wow, he got a full head of steam, got around the corner, cut down just before the line to make. So that'll bring up a third down at about one and a half after that eight-yard pickup. A couple of freshman running backs in yeah. this game yeah. really impressive, man, between what we've seen in more limited action from C.J. Russell and, of course, Gerard Sims on the other side. So Russell comes out of the game. Trips to the bottom of the screen. Third and short. Keep it on the ground, and they pick it up with Keelan Elder. Bring up a good point. C.J. Russell's with that guy. If they want to get to the edge, they try to get him out there with any kind of quick hitters. Elder has been between the tackles. I'm going to pound you inside and really pick up this first down and keep the drive alive. Elder at 5'9", 205, power runner. Trying to find his way up the middle. He gets through Jack defense to pick up three, just short of the 40 to 39. I didn't think he was going to pick up any yards. No. The patience there, yeah. by that little hesitation, made the defenders pause, and then he split a couple of guys and got some yards. Montavious Gaines coming up from his safety position to make the stop. Clock continues to run now under 12 and a half minutes to play. Ball resting just inside the 39. Second down and eight. Big bottom of time. What a throw across the field. Finds his receiver. A first down, down to the 42, Kobe Ross with a reception. Guys, that was some distance. You referenced the arm talent of Hickbottom. When the pocket's been clean, he's been able to carve up the Jaguars' defense right in front of the defensive back. 20-yard pickup. Clock under 12 minutes to play. Ball at the 41, first and 10. Hickbottom with a fake, and that ball is almost picked off. Mm. Oh my! Here, here's a staple of the RPO or run pass option game. You've got that backside slant or glance, whatever you want to call it. But watch here. This is a play where you almost you, you, you fake inside, pull everybody over. Ooh, so close. Davin Cotton, number 54, the redshirt freshman out of Shreveport, almost making a huge interception. And you're anticipating him to move over some, but Cotton stays right there and gets that big paw. He's trying to get it to Cleef Jackson, and Cotton read it just right. So second and ten now. Back to Elder. Elder, well, I'll tell you what, his yards after contact, that's impressive. And they're going to scrum formation. We got rugby. We got rugby in New Orleans. What about the cut by Elder to get this thing started? Offensive linemen love this. They oh, love, yeah. this, this is like playing in the bug when you're a kid. That should have been a the, one, maybe two-yard pickup. Boom, the jump cut there and then Contact. the ability to Contact. stay down low and stay down. And then you got your big guy helping you. He said, hey, I don't run the ball, but I'm going to run with you. <laughs> I'm taking you to the house if I can. It's a modified bush push for 10 yards. First and 10. Elder this time. Nothing doing there. Taken down at the 30. William Waddell is going to say, I got 10 yards on that. <laughs> I got 10 yards on that coach. Stat line. <laughs> Big 75 in that Grambling State jersey. He's been spectacular today. He had to leave the lineup the one time when his helmet got yep. knocked off. But you're seeing him as the emotional leader yep. of that offensive line up front. Ball sits at the 30, guys. Under 11 to play. Clock running. Two-point game. Second down and 10. Both of these offensive lines are really starting to establish themselves. So, like I said, a defensive ha the defense has to make a stop. Skelton with all kinds of time. Looked at the wheel route. Came back. Now he decides to tuck it and run. Spins away. Ball comes out. And it's on the turf. But 
Grambling State falls on it once again. Let's highlight the big men up front. The offensive line coming to the rescue as Caleb Carter laid the hit on Hickbottom. How much time Hickbottom had. And then when he's trying to make that turn, Caleb Carter, boom, Ooh. hits it right there. Great convergence by the offensive line. William Jefferson right there in position, hustling down the field. That's how you're taught as an offensive lineman. As the quarterback breaks the pocket, Hickbottom there tries to make the spin move. Great collision. Give the president a race. That was something. So two potential turnovers avoided by Grambling State as they continue this drive. And a timeout call for Grambling State as the play clock was almost at zero. So 9.52 to play. Grambling State still with two timeouts. Coming away with points on this one, 9.52, guys. If you are the head coach, Broderick Fox, Grambling State, you feel the pressure, you want to get this win, bring the trophy back to Grambling. What are you done up here first? I'll start with you, Anthony. A third and long at this point, you're facing a defense who's had some success with in moving the chains by using the legs of Jeremy Hickbottom in here because there's six yards to go. I don't necessarily think he'll take off and run unless you see a full spread set and empty in the backfield then that's where he can try to climb vertically and have the potential to run. What I've seen with them normally is three by one. They'll have one guy on one side, he'll come on across, the other ones will run either an inside cross and then two deep uh, verticals. Okay. That's what they usually like to run. So third down and six. Grambling State down to one timeout. And they trail by two. There's your three by one, only with the tight end this time. Hickbottom rolling to his right, looking back to his left, and he's in trouble. Taken down. Big loss. Caleb Carter once again with impact. I don't quite think that's what they wanted out of this play. And part of it is George Lewis creating mm -hmm. havoc on the tight end and the running back, Elon Elder. He just he wow. made that play happen. He's such a spectacular talent, guys, coming off the head. Lewis is a really raw talent for the past rest of the last season. Still ended up leading the SWAC in tackles in 2018 in sacks. So a loss of eight. Miguel Mendez now on for the 50-yard field goal attempt. Nope. The sack yardage hurt them in that situation. I'm a little bit yeah. shocked that they didn't punt that ball away. Because he had shown the strongest of legs this game anyway. You gotta drive that ball, it's gonna be lower. Yeah. Generally, guys are gonna get their hands up. And that gets the Southern fans on their feet. They still lead it by two. 9 0 4 to play. Big defensive plays here. Two blockers in position. Jordan Lewis able to flush the quarterback. Then Caleb Carter, the multi year starter for the Jazz, finishing the job. Miss Tiger Woods and his U.S. team as they go head to head with Ernie Hill's international team in Australia, the Royal Melbourne Golf Club. The President's Cup, Wednesday, December 11th on PGA Tour Live Golf and NBC. Back in New Orleans, Bayou Classic, the 46th edition, shaping up to be a good one. Two point game with Southern on top. The winner of this game will go on to face Alphorn State, the SWAC Championship. Right now, Jordan Lewis has been a one-man wrecking crew from that Jaguar defense with a great supporting cast, and they have been dominant, especially here in the second half. Dawson Odom said as the season began, this is one of the most talented defensive fronts he's had to work with since he's been the Jaguars coach. And the talent starts and stops with the guy coming off the edge. Jordan Lewis has been a one-man wrecking crew coming off the edge in this game. Not an offensive tackle, not an offensive guard. And the Tigers have been able to keep their hands on him. And he's so slippery, even though he doesn't really exactly know what he's doing yet in the game, guys. But every time we've seen Jeremy Hickbottom on the run, Jordan Lewis has been somewhere near him, spinning off a block, racing down from the backside, chasing Hickbottom out of the pocket. And here, even when he's not the one making the play, setting up teammates to get the job done. And that's what modern football turned into, getting more speed on the field and putting them in positions to be aggressive. Talked to him last year, he just said, hey, he, he's just learning. He's scratching the surface of what he can actually do. We're seeing more of that now. First and ten for Southern. A two-point lead as the ball is resting at about the 33-yard line. 
Skelton with the give and nothing doing on the inside. And this is a huge opportunity for Grambling to rise up as DeAndre Hoax makes the stop for the Tigers. We called this name a lot today. Hoax leading that Grambling defensive tackles always around the football. One tackle for loss as well. But just always seems to be around the football, a magnet. Now that McCarthy is out, he's having to really step up and play a more pivotal role for this defense. Second down and 10. Clock approaching 8.30 to go in this one. Brent Blitz is on, and Skelton just stiff arms his way out of that. Throws the pass. It was high. But he did a great job, guys, of avoiding an easy 10-yard loss. A-gap. They're coming at the A-gap right there. Right at Skelton. Skelton gets away from it nicely. But they like to put those linebackers there, and it's a hard block. You see how he almost uses the, the uh, lineman to get himself going and forward momentum. But it's difficult for them to pick him up late, and we talked about it earlier, stemming to it. And then those green dogs, that wasn't the green dog. That's how I'm coming after you, dog. Forcing the issue, speeding up the process of the Darius Skelton. So third and ten. This time they send five. They don't get to him. Pass is caught, and it will be a first down. Catch made at the 45. A great job by Hunter Register, who has been just dominant tonight. A quarterback play right there, guys. Skelton's in the pocket. The rush is getting home. He doesn't get antsy. Though. Climbs the pocket, keeps his eyes down the field, throws a strike right where it has to be, hitting Register below the defender. And it's just a perfect situation when the game slows down. Earlier we saw this and he was clutching it, doing different things. He let He's letting that ball go when he wants to, and that's the difference in the first half to now the second half. Needed 10, got 12. Jeremy Carter, the injured tar Tiger on the field, and they'll stop playing, let him get off as he walks off under his own power. Already has his hand taped up very yeah. heavily, but he... He seems to make plays for him as well at opportune times. But Darius Skelton, if you just look quietly, 18 of 25, no interceptions, two touchdowns on today. On Ben, the long setback. It's a first down and 10 with the ball resting at the 45 now. Ben goes inside, breaks outside, and they grab him by the one leg and just hold his progress as he's taken down for a one-yard pickup. Big number 92, Wesley Green there to make the stop for the Tigers. I have to say, Southern has done such a nice job of protecting the football. Uh, other than that low snap earlier and the fumble on that kickoff return, they've done a really good job of playing clean on the offensive end. All of them. Unison. Skelton keep this one, gets the corner. He's got the first down and two and extra. Huge play for the quarterback, Ladarius Skelton, as he picks up nine yards. You can kind of feel that coming, guys, but it was just time for Ladarius Skelton to make another play with his legs. He's been exceptional from within the pocket, just throwing the ball even on the run in the game. But this keeps the defense on the to make sure they're going to have a little bit less starts in that pass for us because of the way he's able to move. Keenan Fontenot coming in to make the stop there from his safety position to get to Ben on the inside. A quick hitter for Ben. He'll pick up a nice six. And you get the feeling that Southern really wants another crack at Alcorn State. Remember, they lost October 26, 27-13. And this may be a different Southern team than they saw back in October if it does, in fact, become Southern winning the Bayou Classic. Well, it's on the hills of Ben yep. and Skelton and Register. They've got a lot of guys now starting to step up and make plays and really get them a position to even put this game away if they can score another touchdown. It's taken them a while to get warmed up, guys, but that last five minutes of the first half really dominated by the Jaguars. This time Skelton keep it again. Gets it above on the inside and has to go for the first down. As he crosses down to get a full progress just inside the 31. And the clock continues to run at 5.56. One of the things you don't see Ladarius Skelton do is slide <laughs> when there's an opportunity to do it at times. And he's had to leave the game a few times this season yeah. because he's gotten banged up running with such physicality. And that's put Lennon McDaniel in the lineup on occasion when it's happened. But that just shows the competitive nature yeah. that he brings to the table. 
Well, you also notice his offensive line, his receivers, even the running backs know they have to block downfield. If you get just one, that might give him that chance to spring it long. So first down and 10. Ball at the 30. Once again, Ben to the inside, and he's going to pick up two really hard yards there. It's a nice cut he made there, guys. Yeah. I'll say this, I mean, been doing this game for a while, as you guys have now, too. Just the physical skill of both these teams on the field, when you think of Roderick Fives, Dawson Odoms, what they both took over with their respective programs, the talent that's on the field right now has continued to evolve and progress over the last handful of seasons as these two teams have gotten better. Second down and eight. Clock now inside the five. Skelton will take off and run. Can he get the corner this time? No, he can't. But he stays on his feet and picks up an extra yard after contact. So that's going to bring a big third down and five as Cody Dillard, number 98, young man out of Allen, Texas, came up to make the stop. Clock continues to run now. 4.30 to play. Grambling State down by two with just two timeouts. Southern has all three. Stay inbounds. The clock keeps going. Yep. Gerard Sims on the outside trying to spring up. You don't have any reason to rush if you're Southern. You want to score, but you also want to use as much clock yeah. as possible. And Grambling State has showed that they're not really a quick strike offense here today against Southern's defense. Skelton pumps once, and he's going to be dropped for a big loss. Brandon Wiggs, number 51, the fifth-year senior out of Atlanta, comes in with a big tackle. They are able to dial up pressure like we've talked about earlier. You use guys up, meaning that the running back has to go for the linebacker. The other linebacker, Wiggs, comes right on the heels of that. That double A-gap blitz is so hard to stop, and Grambler does a nice job with it every single time. What do you guys do here? It's fourth and 13. From this down to distance, this yard line, I think you go forward. It's too long to really attempt a field, field goal. goal. You yep. potentially yep. set up a block. You certainly give up field position either way. So I think it's worthwhile to try and see if you can convert it. Yeah, you've got a big receiver. The first time out of the half. This will be a 30-second so timeout. I, I would go for it. The kicking game hasn't been the, solid today. <laughs> I mean, it, it, in the, at this distance, this is a long field goal. Yeah, this would be close to 50. Right, from the 33-ish yard line. You're looking at either a 50-yard field goal. Now, you could punt and try to pin them down inside. If it goes into the end zone, it's going to come out to the 20 anyway. But I just think in a two-point game, Dawson Odoms is more likely to try and see if he can utilize this drive to close the show. You make yep. it a two-score yeah. game here, that's pretty much game, set, match. That's what they're going to do. I mean, it seemed like they had that in their mind to do it. Oh, no, no. no. Well, there are the SWAC West Division standing Southern and Grambling, the winners we've said before, with the right to play Alcorn State for the SWAC title. They're going to punt this thing yeah. away as they bring in Cesar Barajas, the junior from Arcadia, Florida. He is way back on the 47. Interesting strategy. They burned a timeout just to talk about we're going to punt. All right, I mean, they're, they're not going to need it. Pooch kicked this one away. Oh, wow. Well done. Ball's down at the two, but there is a flag on the field. Far side. And I think it's going to be a procedure situation on Southern. We'll get the word from Tony Ross. the formation against the kicking team. Five players line up in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Replay fourth down. So they'll back him up five on the illegal formation and kick it again. 309. Remember, Grambling down to one timeout. They have the hands guys out yeah. there. We have Hunter Register who's able to, we know what he's able to do from the, that position. And I normally say this might be better for Southern, gives them a little more room, chance to put some air under it, but that was pretty nice yeah, coverage. How much you put do? it down at the two. That's a big mistake by the Jaguars. Yeah. So Devontae Davis is back for Grambling State. He's going to hover right around the 10-yard line. Rojas now sitting at the 48. Put some air into this one. This is for the line drive. Oh, and it checks up. Did it cross the line? 
it looked like it. Nope, it did cross the line. So it is a touchback. That could have been the all-time great as they pinned it inside the one, but it'll come out. I think that's why they call the timeout to help set this up. And both times, their cut team was discombobulated. Yeah. And it looked like they'd lost the ball. Let's look at this one more time. Boom. After it took yeah. that second bounce, it looked like it kicked forward a bit. Yeah. And you see the, the back judge was right there on the oh, line on with the a line. great vantage yeah. point at it. So any part of the ball touches that white line, it is a touchback. So Grambling State catches a break here, fellas. Look how close this was, though. That ball checked right there. On the first execution, if there weren't for the illegal formation, yeah. it would have made Dawson Odom's decision look spectacular yeah. when you're able to down it inside the five. Here, like we discussed beforehand, now it comes out to the 20. We're in for an exciting conclusion of the 46th annual Bayou Classic. Southern leads by two. Grambling has the ball. On PGA Tour Live, Golf, and NBC. You're on the sideline. When they come off, you stay positive. You be that energy when we don't have no energy. And then when it's crunk, you take us to another level. Be great. Be great in everything that we do. Let's be great today. Let's be great today. You don't need no good speech for this one, man. This is down by your class. Unleash on three. One, two, three. Unleash! Coach Odom's hoping to unleash his defense because he puts the game in their hands. Hey, I got my hand up. Can I go play? Charles, you play. are fired up. Two-point game, 2.57 to play. Grambling has one timeout. Hey, they'll say, oh, man, I don't want you on my side. Go on the other side. <laughs> oh, man. It's hard not to get fired up listening. And, and both guys are different in personality, but they both know how to get their teams going. Mm. I couldn't draw it up much better than this, fellas. Yeah. Under three to play, two-point game. Winner goes on to the SWAC championship. Grambling State has the ball, trails by two. Higbottom dumps it out. And that's going to be an incomplete pass. He was trying to squeak it out to Keelan Elder coming out of the backfield. Stops the clock at 2.52. Not all that bad because he was a loss of yards catching that football. So you, you want to get some positive momentum, but that wouldn't have done much for you if you're grand with State. They've got plenty of time, Charles. The fact they just have one timeout, not that big a deal. 2.52. They just need to get into field goal range, and they can win. Their further passing game has kind of been negated by the rush of Southern. Second and ten. Pick bottom with time. Fires across the middle. Has his man. He's going to be short of the first down. They'll give him forward progress out to about the 27-yard line. Raylon Richards. One-on-one -on -one situation. Really tied him up. Not letting him get the pick bottom. This is third down and three. 